And we are back. Couch Company Podcast. I'm John. With me as always, Tyler. Ahoy. Matey. Matey. You like Chips Ahoy? Yeah, that's okay. Best mass-produced Careful. cookie? No, Oreo. Can oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's not best even... Best mass-produced... <laughs> I should rephrase. Best mass-produced... Chocolate chip chocolate cookie? Chocolate chip cookie. Ah, uh, ooh. I'm trying to think uh, of what the other options are. You know the grandma brand? The big ones? Yeah. Yeah. They make a pretty good chocolate chip cookie. I agree, and they're probably better. I actually don't really that's like produced. Chips Ahoy. You give me some milk or you put it in coffee, I think it's good. It's okay. I didn't make you coffee. Did you need coffee? Did you need coffee? No. All right, then I don't need coffee. Are you sure? Uh Uh-huh. All right. So my take on Chips Ahoy, I think they're super mid. I can't even remember the last time I had one. Yeah. But like, why would you not just eat an Oreo is my question, right? So there are times. I'll give you you a for instance. Sure. Uh, Is this like a bullshit Eggo waffle for instance? No, 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 no. no. So like, let's say I have a friend named Schmeiler, and he goes to sheets because he's a fat ass but also lazy but the fat ass is is like taking over up to a certain laziness factor so sheets is as far as he'll go for like a like a snack okay so i gotta stop you here yeah okay so if you're talking about like a fatness rating yeah versus laziness rating Uh uh-huh do we think that if one category rises to a certain level it actually inhibits the other category right because if you're uber lazy absolutely yeah like you said you're not going to travel anywhere to eat anything yeah which probably in my mind would help you out it would if you didn't have a sheets five minutes in either direction that's whenever, fair. Whenever you leave your parking lot. I think they do that on purpose. Probably. <laughs> because yeah. of the conversation we're having. But what about the Z factor? Because we have the X and Y axis, but the Z axis. Money? Money. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I don't do Uber Eats. Yep. Exactly. This is exactly. what I was thinking. So yeah. like you could have a, a big X, which is laziness. Yep. Which inhibits your Y, fatness. Mm-hmm. But if money's not an issue, then Uber Eats destroys that argument. Money is usually an issue. And, and really, it comes down to, like, I don't want to pay $60 for, like, a DiBella's sandwich. It's a video game. From Uber Eats. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So then it's like, well, I'll go out and get it because I'm above Uber Eats. But I'm not so far above Uber Eats that I'm going to go past the five minutes to sheet. Like, sheets right. is, like, the, the set thing. So it's, like, a very balanced. Yeah. As all things should be. <laughs> As all things should be. <laughs> so anyway, you go to Sheets. Yeah. And Schmeiler's looking around, and he sees a pack of Oreos, and he sees a pack of Chips Ahoy. Okay. The problem is, the Oreos, you have two options. You have a small, single sleeve of regular Oreos. Right. Or you have the family pack that's double stuffed. Now, Schmeiler oh. doesn't like double stuff. Wow. It's the, it's right. the imprompt, Im, improper ratio. I actually agree with Schmeiler on this. Yeah. And he seems like a pretty intelligent he and chipper guy. He seems pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So uh, that's a different argument for a different day. But I <laughs> actually believe that the original Oreo is the superior version. Yes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. I, I would think that my friend and you would get along. But anyway, all that being said, there are sometimes now nine times out of ten, you grab the Oreo, even right. if it's double stuff, still the way to go. Right. But there are those occasions when it's like, that's a little too sweet for me. I'm going to go with the other <laughs> oh, cho- it's the chocolate sweetness. cookie. I, I thought you were saying it's the volume. It's, oh, no, no. The volume, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a pack versus a pack. Oh, I'm oh, not going to do the single sleeve. Right, right, I'm never right. going to, that's silly because yeah. it's just the, and then you go back to the money issue of yeah. if you buy, what, how many sleeves are in a family pack? Like four or five? Sure. Probably, yeah. So it's like, is it's a, a family pack bigger than the standard thing? A little bit, yeah. It's like an extra yeah, sleeve so probably or something. Like four and a half, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. That would be the the occasion when I think Chips Ahoy would beat out an Oreo. It's too sweet. In very specific. What occasions. were we talking about the other day? Where I was making fun of you because you always say this thing where like things are too sweet for you. Yeah. Oh, cereal. You're like, oh, yeah, Lucky Charms, yeah, man. Lucky just Charms. give me the marshmallows. Yeah. You know, that's just straight sugar. Well, so the funny thing is Lucky Charms, like I actually prefer like the the not like the Lucky bit. Like I don't like the charms as much. <laughs> like, the, yeah. Well, I don't so know. Like, like categorized. I like, I like the cereal part. Yeah. 
and then I just like a little bit of marshmallow. Like I don't like. I wouldn't be like, oh, I want a bowl of marshmallows. Isn't the cereal part like just alphabet grams or something? Yeah. yeah. So you just eat. You just crush some alphabet al- yeah. alphabets or alphabets, whatever they are. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. They, with the yeah. frog. Is that the one? No, those are Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks? Yeah, I think no. so. With the frog? No, Apple Jacks is the cinnamon stick guy. That's Golden Grams. What are you talking? No, you're trolling now. You're absolutely trolling. Am I? Am I? Yes. No. Golden Grams? Yeah, Golden Grams. Why the would there be a cinnamon stick on Golden Grams? Great. Uh, gold, golden, <laughs> golden, golden, golden Grams. Hold you on. Are, I'm looking it up. Cheeseburger? Uh, You're a thousand percent wrong on this. Hold on, Golden Grams. Golden Grams does not have a Jamaican cinnamon stick as their mascot. Jamaican cinnamon stick. Yes, dude. Don't you remember this? It was it was him I'm talking about a bear, like a weird looking bear. I said a cinnamon stick. He's like, literally the character is a cinnamon stick. You don't remember this advertising? No. You're in marketing. This is no. one of the best ad campaigns ever. It was like <laughs> a cinnamon not. stick. Jamaican guy, I think. Unless, like, I was a kid, dude. I have no. I could be totally wrong. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. We talked about this. The the chocolate and chip then cookie th- thing. There was an apple. I think the apple was like mean or something. And then the the cinnamon stick was just vibing. And that was like the premise of all the commercials. And, and that's Apple Jacks. Yeah, that's Apple Jacks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking so about? Before man? we look this up, the okay. problem is. All right. We're both probably right. Because okay. when you think about it, it's like in my era, which I think we talked about this before. You I didn't have, even think you, they had cereal in your era. That, well, yeah, but it was all Apple Jacks and Golden Grams. Apple Jacks are like not bland, a- Apple, though. Apple Jack. Uh, okay, hold Dude, on. Dude, I'm... Apple, Apple Jacks mascot. We're going to bring yeah. this up. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen this guy before Did, in my did life. he come up first? Yeah. Yes, and the Apple. Yeah. And the apple. And look, what? look at the cereal, dude. It's flavored. It's not just a bland cereal. What? What are you smoking, Tyler? Golden Grams is like the opposite end of the spectrum. Hold on. Hold on. Is Original. your mind blown yet? Yeah. Is yeah, your it mind is. blown? Well, that's like when you were telling me that... Uh, no, it's always been an apple guy. What am I thinking of? Did we have this? I'm having crazy deja vu on <laughs> well, this. We've, I, we've definitely talked about this. <laughs> Frog mascot I think made- for cereal, because we talked about how in my era, oh honey smacks, honey that's smacks, that's what I'm honey thinking smacks. of. You're yeah, right, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. That's I'm sorry. Okay, but and, and it wasn't golden grams. I'm sorry, it was golden crisp that I was thinking of with the bear. Those okay. are those two that I was. Okay, of. you really. I was off. I was off on. The we names. need to go back to our cereal episode. I think we had this exact we conversation, did, but that was like fifty episodes. I ago. think we had this exact <laughs> conversation. Yeah, but in That's in awesome. the the w- the cookie crisp. Yeah, my guys cookie were crisp. Yeah, That's the my, wolf. My guys were robbers. Oh, that's right. It was we like did a look dog. That up. We it was like that. dog yes. robbers. Yes, and you were a wolf. I lost a cheeseburger on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Wow. We're back. Also, cookie crisp. Terrible cereal. Yes. Like not even like bad. Like it is bad for you, but it's not. It doesn't even taste good. It's like it's like artificial cookies. It's like hey, if we took cancer and put it in a cookie form, yeah, and then threw it in milk and didn't even season it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what seasoned I mean. Seasoned it with with tears. I, yeah, something I don't know. So I think at that point you just make like mini Oreos. And that's your cereal. I'm surprised they had to have done that, right? No, but I mean like an Oreo? Yeah. Shrink it. Yeah, that's what I mean. They had to have done that. I don't think so. They did the, uh, the or, uh, not the, the Cheerios, but they're Oreo flavored. They did that. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. And I feel like you could only get that from Japan. I might be totally pulling that out of my bum. But no, I think, I think you can get it around here. Th- I th- I something. Something. It was discontinued or something. Yeah, it probably wasn't good. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, why don't we just make a small Oreo? Why don't you just eat Oreos and dunk them in milk? And that's your cereal for the day. Because you have to trick the parents. You have to Uh, trick the parents. (laughs) Fair. So it has to be made by Kellogg's or whatever. (laughs) Right? Yeah, it has to say heart healthy on it. Instantly, it's going to be good for you. Yeah. So anyways. Vegan. My summary, the summation of my thought here. Chips Ahoy, not good. Okay. And get the Oreos instead. Now, what was interesting about your spiel there is I thought you were going in a different direction with the volume. And I run into this issue, and I'm curious if Schmeiler has a similar issue yeah. with chips. Okay. Uh-huh. I 
fall in between sizes. So you have like the family bag, Mm -hmm. which is too much for one person. It's actually too much for Schmeiler too. Right. Depending on the chip, nine times out of 10 is too much. It's crazy. But then like the individual bags are A, super cost inefficient, Mm -hmm. but B, not enough. So like you run into a big problem there. So it's like you could get multiple small bags, but that's again, you're just throwing money away. And then you could say, oh, it's John, just get the big bag and then eat half and half or something. Yeah. But I want the freshness. I want that open, open the bag. Finish the bag. Finish the bag. Yeah. So I actually found that the barbecue honey twists, Frito kind of things. I don't know if it's okay. Fritos, but what? It, I, someone knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> the honey barbecue twists. That's like the perfect bag. It's like a it's like a big bag, but it's not a family size. It's like in between. So what Schmeiler would do? I, I'm okay. Here's here's a peek behind the curtain because I know you like that. Schmeiler is me. No, I don't know if nah. I don't know if you caught that. I know Schmeiler. Yeah, I'm I know just, him though. I, I, yeah, but he he is me. Dude, I went to his wedding. Uh, he's it can't me. be you. He's me. He's me. All right, I got to process. All that. right. So but, what what I would do is I would go to Sam's Club and I would get the giant box of individual mm. bags because then you get that variety and you get yeah. the freshness so it's like if you want like a like a hard-hitting flavor you get the you get like barbecue and, and like too much barbecue like that salt can really get to you right like if, if it's too if it's too big right but then you have the doritos in there you have the cheetos in there you have the the what, fritos what, in there what's your favorite one because there's a couple different versions i think so so they have the cool ranch the the chili doritos yeah they have the barbecue Chil- wait Chili Doritos? Yeah, the purple bag. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So blue bag, purple bag for Doritos. They have, really? I yeah. thought it was purple, dark red bag, spicy nacho. A spicy nacho. That's what I thought it was. I could no, be wrong. No, because it was that. They, were, they had Fritos in there. They had Cheetos in there. Because I, I found out that I actually really, really like Cheetos. Cheetos are great. Um, and But like the real, like the regular ones. Not the Flaming Hot or anything. Just like plain no, Cheetos. No, I, I, uh, I love... But uh, I also like the flaming hot. But thing. they also had, uh, so I think, uh, vi- chi- uh, vinegar and uh, I don't know, like really? lays and and barbecue. It was a, it was a crazy thing. But I wow. remember it because it was like, hey, these are actually all good, and I was like very happy with yeah. the selection. The one I was used to is I thought it was purple Doritos, dark red Doritos, which is the spicy nacho, flaming hot, um, sour cream and onion lays. Yeah. Like the green bag. Mm-hmm. And then maybe like a barbecue Fritos or something. Yeah, but see what we just said? Because my Fritos were regular. So it's like what... Or I no, it, I'm sorry. It was not regular Fritos. It was chili Fritos. Chili Fritos. Yeah. yeah. Chili Fritos. Yeah. Because I remember we got like one of those for Halloween or something. And then the chili Fritos were around forever. Like nobody was yeah, touching those. Yeah. So that's definitely the weak one. But I, th- I would say so. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll grab it next time we're, we're there. I don't know. Maybe they switched it up, man. I yeah. don't know. Although I will say since, so we went to, this is kind of a transition, but it's still within the, the whole realm of don't eat garbage. Uh, so we went to Beer Fest on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, never been to one of those before. That's wild. That's $60 for... Unlimited beer. Unlimited beer. Just, yeah, I, I went like last year. 200 vendors of... that's crazy uh, it gets wild too there I, I i wrote down all the beers i liked would you like the list sure i the my favorite one when i went last year was like they advertised it as the oldest hefeweizen in the country or something yeah i don't know if that's true but it was very good well i've like i like four of them that's it they were all dude i was drinking like they wow, were all yeah. fine they were yeah, good yeah. yeah yeah there were four that i was like i need to find these okay I don't like Fathead, but I do like Fathead Foggy Goggle, which is oh, yeah. Bison. No, that, that one's that is great. My top one. That one's great. Uh, there's also uh, We Hidden Stepner Half of Bison. Yeah, no, it's like, probably the one I was talking about. Probably. That one's really good. Actually, maybe, um, maybe it is. I don't know. There's a Sly, uh, Sly Fox Royal. Uh, what Royal, is that one? Royal Half of Bison. It's a Bison. I remember Bison. Sly Fox. Yeah. I can't remember that one. I don't know. Sly Fox Royal. And then yeah. there's Cape May White. What's that? Hefeweizen. They're all. Oh, they're all. Yeah, they're all Hefeweizens. Interesting. That's okay. all I like. Like, okay, we tried everything. Like, well, I shouldn't say everything, but like, Mike was trying a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, there was a ton of stuff. Like, Chelsea was doing all of the, um, like the ciders with like John and stuff. So, like, yeah, 
it, everyone had a good time. Like it was good. Um, and then there, there was like, like Miranda was just kind of like the middle, just getting everything. She yeah. was just, she was the middle ground, but sure. Yeah, what a great deal, man. No, like, it's, you just want to get awesome. shows, hammered. Now the problem is I was getting over my sickness then. And it was like, okay, I, I finally turned the corner. I was really bad Thursday. I was better Friday. And then Saturday, I was like, I feel great. And then we just drank out in the rain all, all day. Yeah, that might absolutely annihilate uh, your Sunday immune system. Was, Sunday was not fun. But after Saturday, Sunday, I was like, I have to be in a wedding. Well, I have to be in there. I'm, I'm going to a wedding in two months. And I'm like, I need to get serious. So I've been doing 1,200 calories for... Training arc has started? This is, I mean, it, yeah. Nice. Like, I, I've, I haven't... It's been a week now. I've hit it every single time. So it's beautiful. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get back to serious. I'm just doing oatmeal, salmon, rice, broccoli. Love it. That's it. Love yeah. that for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you had a good time at Beer Fest. Yeah, I, had a, I had fun when I went. Um, they still had like the food trucks and stuff. Oh, yeah. But yeah. we went. So <laughs> mistakes were made, I think. But we went to some place beforehand. I forget the name of it. It was, it was decent. Um, but we ate first, then went there huge mistake yeah uh, well we didn't we thought there were gonna be like big lines and everything else like there were no lines it was totally fine we were we got the early pass so like we were there like an hour before everyone else oh wow yeah did you stay the whole time uh i mean we stayed till yeah like uh so close final, like yeah. little final call like we we left before it was like kicking you out yeah and then yeah. We, we got out pretty pretty safely but. okay Wow. It's good. That's a long time to be uh, there. Well, it gets worse. All right, here we go. Here's another transition for you, which <laughs> I wasn't expecting, uh, expecting you to do. We walked from the casino to the... Oh, John so told we, me. Yeah, I got a so text we went from back John. to the, yeah. the casino. Uh, played some Ultimate. Mike was having a good time with Ultimate. John did not have a good time with Ultimate. I guarantee um, John's playing it wrong. He tells me he may, plays maybe. the strategy, but I think he's not... Which is not to say like you can still get hammered in that game. Sure, playing the basic strategy because you know obviously the house still has an edge. Yeah, still get on ultimate hold'em. I don't know if I said hold ultimate hard, Texas hold'em. Yeah. yeah, it's like Texas hold'em. Essentially, you're playing against the dealer. It's a pretty cool game. Sorry, did Mike, you have another point? No, to Mike that? was having a good good time. John was like, "Screw this." He went over to the craps table. Jesus Christ! He taught me how to play craps. Yeah, he. So I can, oh, yeah. I, can, I can play craps now. Uh, like actually, I feel confident that I can put money in and and know roughly what i'm doing yeah. that's awesome yeah okay here's the mistake that john makes and i'm calling him out here wow. and i'm sorry Can i buddy? just say that john had the longest roll time like oh, I mean, did he? yeah that's who well, he was super pissed so he texted me and he was like well first of all schmeiler texted me first <laughs> okay i did when the night was young no schmeiler oh okay this is how i know you're two different people because oh, right, you would right. never do this that's true schmeiler said i love you john i was yeah. like oh man schmeiler that's so aw-. like thanks schmeiler yeah my my podcast ho- Buddy, never co-host, doesn't never doesn't would say that. Crap, He's never yeah. affectionate, right? So when I was around Schmeiler, whenever he was doing that, sure, and I was feeling real good because, like, we we I mean, we had like fifteen drinks within twenty minutes or something. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, and like these are like six ounce drinks. Like they're not like no. just nothing. And did you keep the little mug? Uh, Chelsea did. Yeah. yeah, I threw mine out. Oh, I just want to carry it, but I then Chelsea fair. took put it in my cargo shorts. So I was just walking around with a. Crusty so mug, Michael. So anyway, we're kind of, yeah, I guess kind of. <laughs> but I was like, you know, every time John drinks, he always texts me that he loves me. I'm like, mm. I I need to return this. Oh, it was this completely f- transactional. No, it wasn't transactional. It was just <laughs> like, was. I mean, think about it this way. I owe this guy. I I felt a certain way, and I was like, I need to text John. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm glad you thought okay. of me. Oh. The the other time that happened was when you guys were in. Uh, are you at Hopper House? Maybe. Oh, yeah, because this is when you fell off the wagon. You're doing really good with your diet, and oh, then you just yeah. crushed yourself. Yeah. And you yeah. went to Pins Mechanical, which is a really fun place. Which is amazing, and yeah. it, it ruined me. Yeah, yeah it ruined you. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so heard from Schmeiler first in the night. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh, man, these guys are having a great time. Great. Then John texts me. He's like, <laughs> fuck Rivers. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, here we go. So like, when you're a gambler and someone says, fuck X Casino, there's a big message coming yeah it's a big big boy coming <laughs> <laughs> so we call it in the industry so anyways he's telling me about ultimate texas hold'em he's like this game sucks blah 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 um and then he's like yeah he was pretty much telling you what you just said mm-hmm. went to craps and then he taught you which i was like that's awesome but here's the point when you're playing ultimate texas hold'em or craps 
these are games that are very volatile, mm-hmm. which means that you need to have a big stack, deep pockets, to be able to play that to be safe. I mean, you can play it with like a hundred bucks. Yeah. But the percentage that you're going to go bust is extremely high. So you got to pad that. Like if you're playing something like blackjack, blackjack is an extremely low volatility game because you're winning one and losing on one unit most of the time. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's variations of that. If like you double down or split, but a vast majority of the time you're winning or losing one unit. But if you notice in craps, I'm sure John had one bet out yep. and then he would put one bet behind that bet, maybe make another bet. Mm-hmm. So like you can be out there with like four, four, six units. Like if you're feeling crazy, yeah, it gets pretty insane. And then one seven comes, you're down six units. Right. Which if that's $10, which is what we usually play at, that's 60 bucks. Yep. If you're in for 200, you're like almost halfway. Which is why every time I was, because like I was standing next to him, I was, I was, I mean, we were all feeling pretty good, but it was like, okay, I'm, I'm getting this. I was asking questions. I understood it. But he was pretty positive the whole time, right? Like mm-hmm. he was just like, okay, we, that's, that's all day. This doesn't matter. Like this is cool. Like whatever. Yeah. But like I just keep seeing like the, <laughs> his chips go so down. So that's, that's what we refer to as but, copium. But the, yeah. But then he'll have a good, <laughs> good, uh, <laughs> he'll have a good like run or whatever. And yeah. it's like, oh, okay. Like cool. And like he stayed a lot. I mean, he was doing that for, well over an hour. Yeah. I have to talk to him about it. I think what we have to do, because when I went with Devin, we were really successful when we were switching from the pass and don't pass. He was doing that. Oh, he was? Yeah. Okay, then he was just guessing wrong, I guess. <laughs> uh, partly. I mean, I, I, I don't want to... I hope he wasn't doing it on my account, but he was like showing... He was like, okay, so if I do this here, here's how this works. And right. like that was super helpful. Now, I hope that he wasn't just throwing away $10 <laughs> just to show me stuff. No, because he could have won. Yeah. So Nobody knows. It, it was it was pretty good. The only thing we didn't mess with is like the middle part of the board where it's like, I think I understood it where you can bet on it. And then like if someone rolls a snake eye, it's like, cool, it's like 35 to one or some insane thing. Yeah, 30. 30 to one, whatever. But it's like, okay. like The house edge and the middle bets are some of the worst in the entire casino, which is why you want to avoid it. But they're really exciting bets. So yeah. like when you're hammered, yeah, sometimes you just throw, <laughs> throw one on, on there. Yeah. box cars. Well, but people are rolling sevens like every other, literally every other roll. Yeah. And and it started on the opposite end of the table and everyone was taking their turn rolling, which I didn't know that's how that worked. That that was something that kind of clicked with me of like, oh, okay, it's like a turn-based yeah. thing. Yeah, And John's just, just shit talking. Every, like, this guy does not roll. She does not roll. Yeah. He does not roll. And it was hilarious. <laughs> it got all the way to it. He's like, now me, I trust myself. I'm good. He rolls twice. Out. He rolls a seven is yeah. out. The guy next to him rolls twice. And like, he was like, he rolled it like he knew what he was doing. Roll to seven. It's like, dude, this is all just luck. Like well, uh, all the 100%. trash talking, and it's just like, now it came all the way back around, and he was easily the longest of the night. So it's yeah. like, okay, well then, it, it was just fu- it was funny. No, John, I love John. He's like stereotypical gambler, dude. Where it's like, well, I thought it was like an actual serious way of rolling. Like I thought, oh, if you put your dice this way, or if you throw it on this side, or you have to hit. Like I thought you had to like roll dice. And the dice had to land in sections. That's what I thought craps was. <laughs> so when people were talking like, oh, wow. do you even know how to roll dice? Or do you know how to do this? Or can you yeah. do that? And yeah. like, oh, this is like serious. It's all luck. Yes. So welcome, it's like that, welcome that to opened casinos. my eyes. Yeah. Welcome to the casinos, dude. <laughs> like, okay. I love John, but he is a stereotypical gambler in the fact that like he'll complain about how people roll dice. He'll complain about like what people do in blackjack. Where from a mathematical perspective, it literally doesn't matter. Like, it's all baked in. I, uh, you know all, what I mean? All that, well, yeah, but like, all that being said, I, and maybe it was just like he was explaining it like in a very specific way, but like, I felt very educated by the end of the night. That's which awesome. I, I did not expect, given like we were drinking for <laughs> six hours or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but no, he, he did a great job for me. Dude, yeah. I love going with John. He's a ton of fun, man. Yeah, but it, it was funny because he was going all the way around, and then whenever I actually realized that it doesn't matter how you roll it, like just get it across the board. You should watch me like, roll, dude. I roll like a drunken dolphin. Dude, the guy next to me just was like, him. like would throw mm-hmm. it and like spin around or something. Like every person yeah. is doing their own like yeah. special well, little. It's all. It's all. Um, what's it called? So, what do you mean? Superstitious. Superstition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like people set the dice. Yeah. Now, here's the thing that actually splits the gambling community 
is like there's this thing called dice setting. So people claim to have an advantage in that game because they can manipulate the dice in a way that gives them a slight advantage, Mm -hmm. like by suppressing the amount of sevens they roll. I don't believe it because like the back wall has like the ridges on it. Yeah. So I honestly think you have to hit the back wall. Like that's a requirement. Yeah, they weren't really. If you are consistently not hitting Mm -hmm. the back wall, right? Like you could get good enough, good enough at throwing dice where you could like kind of slide them or, you know, kind of flop them. You know, if you do like a really high roll, you could, and I believe, yeah, you could probably get good enough to where you had left sevens. Yeah. Cause you're, um, like affecting the rotation, maybe not doing it as much, right? Um, and like you're looking at the axis, so that's what they claim to do. They set it in a particular way, mm-hmm. whether they keep it on the same axis, and that position of the dice, there's no combinations of sevens on that, right? It has to move to a different. That's direction. what the older guy was doing. It looked like like he was keeping them together right. and then like slid them and exactly. Yeah. So if you're sliding them or if you're not hitting the back wall consistently, they're gonna not count it eventually. Mm-hmm. So my theory on this is like you're hitting the back wall. I think that's going to affect it in such a way where it's going to be a random result. I don't think that anyone can do it consistently. Like you'd have to be so insanely good. Maybe someone is. I don't believe it though. It sure didn't seem like that way that night. I guarantee nobody there is. Like if someone is that good to actually gain. It's like one guy somewhere in Korea. it, It is a handful of guys and. You have to consider that it has to be consistent too. Mm-hmm. Like you have to have a consistent advantage because if you have a couple bad nights, the house is is going to gain the advantage again on you, yeah. right? Yep. So, oh man, I could talk about this forever, <laughs> but it just makes me so mad because people who claim to be able to do that also make just horrific bets. Yeah. Like just super high house edge bets. And I'm like, you're throwing away EV at this point. But you're chasing the the high of like hitting. No, they're like, saying oh, that they're it, yeah. they're professionals though. Yeah. Like if you're just doing it for fun, yeah, fucking do whatever you want. Yeah. It's entertainment. <laughs> but if you're saying, oh no, I'm a pro at this. Yeah. You're an idiot because obviously you're not even making the the highest expected value bets on the board. Yep. All right, rant over. I mean, he he, he and maybe it's just just because he got the bad luck too. But he was like explaining like. Well, if they roll a seven before they actually get one of the, like the big numbers, yeah, and you're on the, was it the the don't pass or, or you're on the passing, yeah, and you get paid out. I'm like, oh, okay. So like, there's a lot of like, yeah, little stage stuff one there. sevens are good if you're yeah. on the pass, which yeah. is what people usually play, and then stage two is when you don't want it. Shout out to the freaking people running the table. Yeah. I'm like, how do you keep track? Like, people are it's literally crazy. just throwing chips. Like yep. at the same time, I'm like, how could you possibly know who goes where? And, and like, it's nuts. They're very good at their job, and there's a lot of terminology to learn too. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they'll just throw t- chips at you. They'll say high low, which means snake eyes and sixes. Um, like, there's all this shit. Yeah, and it's like crazy. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot more training that probably goes into the game. I'd have to imagine. I, also, you you'll think? see this dude where people will argue about payouts and like they'll try to get more they'll try to like uh i mean they gave john more for 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 no reason they fucked up i that's what he said yeah they they've done that to me as well like i'll always call them out on it obviously if it is bad for me but yeah if it's like sometimes they don't take away my bet even though i lost yeah those are the best i think that's what happened uh yeah well yeah i don't know it was fun fun time that's awesome so now we can play craps and lose all our money yeah I, so I, I would rather play Ultimate Hold'em. Really? Yeah. You think it's more fun? I, I mean, I put 200 in and got 400 out. Oh, that night you you no, were up? No, that was the night, the last time we went. Oh, so you didn't play when you went last week? No, I, I was like, eh, I don't want to lose money. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I'm up. So this always happens to me. Like, I'm up. I was telling you about it on last week's episode. I was up like 600 or something. Mm-hmm. I haven't gone back because it's like... I don't, want, I don't want to lose it. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to lose it. Yeah. So I don't know. that's ten video games. Speaking of video games, we have quite a bit to talk about in the yeah. video game realm. Everything we just talked about was not on our list. Of, of course, this is literally clockwork. Yeah. Let's talk about Dave the Diver first. Yeah. Um, I've actually been hearing quite a bit about this, and Tyler actually played it, so I'm curious your your thoughts. Dave the Diver 
and I have to be very careful with this because I think most of the awesomeness of that game is the discovery part of it, of like all the different layers in it and stuff like that. On the on the overall surface, uh, you dive. Your name is Dave. <laughs> you dive. Fascinating. You capture fish, and you go exploring this like ocean. Okay, I'm with you. You capture all the fish. You bring it back. You own a sushi restaurant. And so during the day you fish, during the night you open up your restaurant and serve people sushi to make money, to upgrade your gear, to go deeper, to get better fish, to get, you know, like it's that, it's that loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the gameplay loop. Um, you'll get quests, you'll meet people, they'll tell you to do different things, new gameplay mechanics, new areas, new... Every time, so like I've put about, let's call it 12 hours in this game already. And I've just unlocked three new, completely new gameplay mechanics and, and areas and things to do and stuff like that. So I don't know if you ever played Stardew Valley. Um, it gave me vibes of that. It gave me vibes of, um, uh, what's the, the, like you have to like dig, uh, digging. Isn't it? It's like your robot, your robots. You have to dig down crap. I thought it was mother or something. Work, something. I don't know. Um, that was probably a flash game. There, <laughs> there's a lot of games yeah, like that, well, though. Yeah, but it's just like this game is better than it has any right to be, and it's so much fun. The writing's really good. It's not like overly done or anything like that. Um, and the gameplay loop has me absolutely hooked. Where like that's all I'm thinking about. Still? It, yeah. It's just like wow. you have a list of things. It's like, okay, today, because like you, you fish, you can dive in the morning, <clears throat> dive in the afternoon, um, and then you unlock, spoilers, but like you can unlock night diving. And essentially what happens is your night is like three uh, thirds or something. And if you dive at night, you lose uh, like a third of your clock o- clock of your, of your open hours for your right. sushi. Yeah. So you make less money, but you can get like, specific fish and do specific things so it's like trade off yeah um but like there's no real time issue with it so like a lot of those things like obviously you have oxygen supply which you have to upgrade and like you can go down and like the the more oxygen you get the longer you can stay down there and stuff and you have to like you can only carry so much fish and like on the surface it seems like oh this is like done before but they make such good choices where you never feel punished you never it's not like it's like it's not like an active time for like day and night right so it's just like okay you're gonna dive in the morning if you're down there for like three hours like real time that's fine that takes as long as if you're there for five minutes and then come up to the surface it's like that's your morning dive then your afternoon then you're not so like everything that they've done so far has been very very smart and it feels really good And it's like you have your diving sim, your sushi restaurant sim, which you can hire people to then go out and scavenge for stuff and run your restaurant. And then you have to meet other people where you can like, there's like farming, there's like, you can like grow your own, like it's insane how this opens up. Um, You get a phone, like an actual phone that has like a million apps on it. And it's like you have your Instagram things that you have to worry about. You have collector things to worry about. There's a Pokemon aspect to it where it's like, got to catch them all. And you have to get like rare fish cards by catching the fish. But you have to, if you hurt a fish and capture them, it's only a two star. If you kill a fish, it's a one star. But if you like net them and grab them, it's a three star. So it's like you have to like upgrade your gear and get certain things. Like you have like poison tipped arrows and sleeping arrows and, and you can get like a sniper rifle if you wanted to. Like, it's insane, uh, the stuff you can do. Um, I, again, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm trying to be, like, cautious on, like, exactly every, but, like, you were asking me, is this game of the year? And I was like, ah, I don't think it's game of the year, but it's worth it. Like, the more, I'm, I don't know how long, like, how far I was in there whenever you asked me that. Now I'm thinking it might be, like, it's up there for me. That's insane. It might be my favorite game I've played this year. <laughs> oh my god! And it's insane. Like it's not like it's a pixelated thing, but it's almost like a three D pixelated. Like they do a good job with the artwork. Yeah. But like 
every single thing that I unlock, every new thing I get, I'm sure at some point you're going to hit a wall, right? At some point, it's just going to be like, well, now finish out collecting all the fish or something. I'm like, ah, okay, enough. But like every time I think I got it, I'm like about done with it. A new area opens up, a new area opens up, and it gets bigger and deeper. And it's just like, it's crazy. Um, so like I'm at the point now where I think I've seen the entire ocean, but also I know that I can upgrade my suit some more, which means that there has to be something like upgrading your suit lets you go deeper and deeper and deeper in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know something has to be opening up soon. I'm like giddy about it. So I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's see what the next thing is. Yeah, no, I, I've been hearing really good things. It's crazy. About, it's so cool. It. There's just something about like these, I mean, it's an indie game, right? Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's, I guess they look at the, maybe the limitation of resources forces them to look at games in a different way. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just pure creativity or pure, like, I don't want to say efficiency, but like, you know, refining mechanics. Yeah. Because you don't have the flashy cutscenes or. So it's crazy. funny you mention that. They have little cutscenes. Like after you do something or you meet a new character, mm-hmm. there's this digital, like it's a pixelated cutscene yeah. of the character. And I think all of them are hilarious and awesome. And yeah, I, can't say, I can't say any more than that, but like it's like every character is so unique and very that character. Yeah. It's so cool. Dude, it, so uh, that is a game you have to play this year. Is it on Game Pass? No. Is it $30? Uh, I think it's like I think it got maybe out for like fifteen. Oh wow! Well. Yeah, was that the Steam sale though? I mean, I'll tell you right now how much it is. What whatever I paid for it, I know I I would have I should have paid more. For what you get out of this game, it's actually kind of nuts because you you think about all these games of like oh, I paid seventy dollars for for right, this right. Um, and meanwhile, this this is the only game that I'm like constantly thinking about. And I'm like I need to play more of this and just to get lost in it. It's a perfect Steam Deck game. Um, I don't know why it's not coming up, but... No, people were raving about this game, so I was... I think it's a 90 right now on it's Open definitely a, It's definitely a mighty guy Yeah, on Open Critic, but um, yeah, no. I And here's the thing, too. It was like one of those situations where there wasn't a ton of reviews. I think there was like 20-something reviews. So I was like unsure if this was like... Sometimes you see like a niche game get really high, highly rated because there's like six reviews, right? Right. I feel like 20, you're starting to get in a circumstance where it's like, okay, uh, it's probably enough reviews that yeah. it's actually just a good game. But yeah, it's like top 10 or five on Open Critic this yeah. year. It's, uh, it's 20 bucks. It's not bad. On no, Steam, right? It's, it's amazing. Well, I'll add it to my list of never ending games the, I have to play. The thing that I feel bad about is another good one, Dredge, came out. That yeah. I was playing yeah. that, that was high up on my list. I was like, this is a really good game. Yeah. Also a fishing game. Uh, <laughs> right. But albeit with a much, much darker, more depressing tone. So it, they, they are very different games. Uh, I still love that game. But if it was like, pick your favorite fishing game, like Dave the Diver just slaps eats like this, this guy's for lunch. Like it, it's like they, where Dredge, it kind of got to a point where it's like, okay, you have to grind some things out before you can move on day the diver it's like fun in everything you're doing it's like you're and maybe it's just like in my brain how i'm like the collect-a-thon the constant like check box type stuff yeah but it's like every dive you do and you could do three a day is like you're checking off like 20 different things right so like you just pick up everything and it's all moving you forward which is super cool but yeah it seems like a very much a tyler game yeah, I don't know how much it would be for like streamers. So like, I think of Jeff immediately of like, oh, Jeff, this would be a great game for him to try. I don't know how well that's going to play on like Twitch. Yeah, right? this is very relaxing. Yeah, kind of game. That's yep. fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned Stardew Valley. Yeah, that's it's the same. Yeah, the same, same vibe. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Do you think I'll like it though? I don't know. That's the question. Because I'm like thinking, like, look, I believe you. I believe the community. Yeah. But generally, like I think those games are fine, but they're, I would never call a game like that game of the year for me personally. Yeah. Because I don't know. But, you know, I have been talking about like Flash games and stuff recently. 
because I had you play Henry Stickman. Yeah. And we you know, talked about that last week, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And I think that um, kind of the indie games that we see is, to me, in my mind, it's like the evolution of like that Flash game era where you have these yeah. like super small studios just making these kind of fun games. Like when you describe things like that, I definitely know there was a, a million of them, but there's games where like you mine in the earth. Mm-hmm. You get like rare stuff, and then you go up top, and you upgrade, blah blah blah. Uh, Steam, Steam World Dig is the that's what I was, th- and there's Steam World sure. Dig too. Yeah. those are the two that I was thinking. There's of. there's a ton of them though. Yeah, something I think about um, that was popular. This game was called Learn to Fly. Yeah, it's this penguin that, yep, flies with a hang glider. And you keep going further and further, and that started as like a a flash game. Yeah, and like there, there's a ton of different versions of them on like mobile yeah. and, and stuff. So like, it gives me those kind of vibes, but it seems like we're getting to a point where like it's just being refined, mm-hmm. that kind of formula. Because I think there is a kind of formula to that, where it's like you go out, you get resources, you come back, you upgrade. Like that's the standard yeah. foundation. And yeah, the way you describe it, it seems like this is like just really enhancing that and adding to it in a really creative it's and a interesting video way. Game. It's just a fun, <clears throat> like everything they do is smart. Yeah, like that's the thing is like everything they do just makes you feel good. I, like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. I'm I'm glad you like it. I'll have to check it out. I have a lot of games to play. I mean, I had the two. <laughs> uh, like we were talking League of Legends. To, if I can just knock all my stuff out, but like I did Convergence. I did Mage Seeker. Mage Seeker. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mage Seeker is cool. Um, I didn't get super super far into that, but I played a. a couple hours of convergence and like that game is real fun. Like I, I like my side scrollers like or in the blind forest and, and like shank it feels like. Um, but it's, it's very tight and fun and like the, the movement and stuff is really cool. And like the, the rewind time with echo and stuff is all, all neat. So like more to come there. I don't, I don't know if I care so much about the, the lore as much as I did with rune King. Like rune King was like, I like the characters. I like the voice acting, all that stuff. This one is hit or miss for me, but the game, like, again, you know, I'm a gameplay guy, but like, uh, convergence is really good. Yeah. I, I think one thing that that game has going for it is I know you were excited for that one in particular because of the side scrolling aspect. Yeah. Um, but for anyone who watched arcane, that's going to be the same character from arcane echo. And that's going to be the same place. Um, yep. I think it takes place in Zon. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that maybe contributes to people playing it because I know Arcane did really well. Mm-hmm. It was really popular for people outside of the league genre, like scene. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think it got decent reviews on Open Critic. We were talking about that. I think Mage Seeker and Convergence got like like eighty eighty one. Yeah, 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 like purple, which is good. Like you said, like I know that you know when we were talking before the podcast. I was like, yeah, you know, I got a lot of things to do. I don't know if I'm going to get to those purple games. And you're like, well, purple's good still. Purple and is where you want to be. For yeah. Like those hidden gems. Like, purple's yeah. great. Like, I, I respect purples. And what we mean by purple is like the second tier on Open Critic is mm-hmm. a purple guy who's like a little less happy than the mighty guy. Yeah. Actually, I want to describe the mighty guy as happy, more like powerful. Jacked. He is Just jacked. Like, yeah. The purple guy is pretty happy, though, because he knows. Like, yeah. this is where it's at. Anyways, what was I going to say? Um, so, like, yeah, I mean, I know I poo-poo Tyler's rating of Diablo being at 80, but, like, 80 is still solid, <laughs> right? Like, so, I don't know. Maybe I have to readjust my my mindset. But, like, I've been – look, this game, this year, I guess it's a good transition. Like, this year has been insane for games. Mm-hmm. One of the best years I can remember in recent history where it's, like – I would say there's at least like five game of the year contenders. Yeah. It's actually nuts. So, you know, it'd be a great top five is like best year for video games. I thought we did that. Didn't we? Or no, I think we did. We just picked a random year. We did. We looked at every game of the year by year. And I think we rated those. Yeah. But I'm talking about like, you look at the catalog of that year, which is the most stacked. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. No, it's a good, good year for video games. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a great year for video games. So, like, I'm trying to wake, work my way through, like, the top top ones, which a lot of them are AAA games this year, right? Like, yeah. 
in recent history, we've seen like indie games kind of, I don't want to say dominate, but like some of the most interesting game of the year contenders, it seemed like were indie games, right? Mm -hmm. And like the major AAA games, like maybe there was like one or two really good ones for that year. But other than that, it was like nothing else. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this, I think, before, but like, would you rather only be able to play red tier or like, what is it, 90 and above, I think, or right. 91 and above right. games? Yeah. Which are few and far between, mm -hmm. but that's all you play during the year. Or would you only want to play purple tier, which is like 76 to 89 or something like that, and in like that area? And you're, I, you're I purple think tier. I think I would rather be the purple tier. Yeah. Why? Well, yeah. Like you said, I think you get the hidden gems there. Yeah. And it seems like just you as a player. Yep. Just get that excitement out of those like kind of games. Usually they're not like crazy deep. Although Day of the Diver is very deep, literally and figuratively deep. Uh, and yeah, like it, it's one of those like it's just fun. Yeah. Like it's just like this is a relaxing. You know, it's it's not Zelda where it's like there's a million things. To, like Zelda, I, I probably will never finish that. I'll probably never go back to it. I don't even know because it's just overwhelming. Like already I don't remember all the controls. I'm like, I don't want to. I have no idea what I was doing, you know, like before. So it's like those bigger games, those, those high tier games, like you have to stay on them and, and knock them out. Otherwise, it's like, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of how I felt about Resident Evil, though. Like, it was yep. just a throwback to, like, this is just a video game. Yep. It's silly and fun. Resident Evil's great. And the mechanics are good, but I never felt, like, overwhelmed or anything. Like, I think that's a fair point. Like, yep. especially when you're looking at sequels, right? We've talked about how you have to improve. You have to make it bigger, better, things like that. And maybe that comes at the expense of making it a little bit too complicated. Although I haven't played the Zelda, so I don't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, Zelda, it doesn't, it, it, social media doesn't help. Where you get you see all these TikToks of people making like star destroyers and just <laughs> nuking the planet or whatever. And it's just like that's okay, crazy, like, dude. Yeah, it's it's. I, I wasn't. I think it was like a, they made like a Tie Fighter or something. That's they're like flying amazing. around just killing people. Like yeah, but it's like I'll never do that. Like I'll have two sticks together and hopefully I'll be able to like. See, slide that surprises down me though because like you love that creativity like building things but it's too clumsy on it i i, I do i hate 30 frames per second so is that what it is oh yeah 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 and if, on a good day oh, like yeah. it definitely <laughs> drops below 30 yikes yeah well i mean like look how massive it is dude it's crazy yeah oh it's they can it's even a, run it on a switch it's incredible yeah but it still feels like you're fighting the controls more than it, it's just effortless and, and smooth yeah so you're not able to play Final Fantasy then at 30 frames. Uh, so I actually put it on performance mode. And, and I think, and I think good it's with largely it? fine, yeah. Maybe they patched it, but I know when I was playing it, dude, it would dip, especially depending on the area you're in. It would it would be like 40. It, yeah. Oh, no. It's it, like whenever I'm in like the town or whatever, like yeah. it definitely dipped. Yeah. But in my mind, it's like I'd rather have it dipping because like I need to play this game, right? Because like you really love it. Uh, Jeff liked it. Like we, we have to talk about it. I want to. I want to be able to talk intelligently about. It. I want to play the game. So, in my mind, it's like I, I'll take a dip, and I'd, I has to be above thirty. I tried doing it in like thirty, like, and I was like trying to get used to it. And I just couldn't do it. Yeah, it took took me a while. I just kind of trudged through the thirty for a while, and now I'm pretty adjusted to it. Um, but it, you know, for you, like the combat's pretty locked at sixty. So yeah. The combat's that's, fine. That's the most important part. Combat is very uh, Devil May Cry. Oh yeah. Like I didn't I realize how someone much. Someone who's involved in Devil May Cry, like worked on this. Oh okay. Which well, is that would yeah. Explain it. Yeah. I maybe I just made that up, but I think that's the case. Um, but yeah, we'll get into that. I mean, something about Final Fantasy I did want to talk about though, is there's been like this argument online about the sales of the game. Yeah. So I think it sold three million. Was it the first two weeks or was it the first week? I think it was the first week. So three million copies sold the first week, right? Mm -hmm. And people are saying like, oh, this is a flop or a failure or yeah. below what they wanted or whatever. And Square is super disappointed to the point where Square actually came out and they said, no, this is 
were very happy with the results of this. Yeah. Because, like, what people were doing is they were comparing it to, like, Final Fantasy 15, uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, right? Those kinds of numbers. And, like, the thing you have to consider, too, is, like, this is a PS5 exclusive, right? You don't have the PS4 install base, which is a huge number of people. Mm -hmm. Like, I still think to this day the PS5 base is not huge. Like, yeah, I mean, they, what was it, a year and a half, two years that you just couldn't find one? Right, exactly. Yeah. And like, you're still, you, you'd have to still see fallout from that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's like priced pretty high still. I, I would mean, say. to be fair, you're never going to see fallout on PlayStation, but go on. Maybe someday maybe, when maybe. Microsoft maybe. buys play Sony. <laughs> um, can you imagine? Oh my God. Yeah. Wow, what would the courtroom look like there? I mean, I guess <laughs> no one would be arguing against them. <laughs> right. Yeah, maybe Nintendo like, would be like, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo is just like, we're here. Anyways, um, they, so I just, sorry, not to jump all topics, but they did extend that out. So they have another three months to make that deal. What? Activision and uh, Microsoft extended their thing. So they were supposed to have it solidified by the 18th, how we talked about last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. They extended another three months. So Microsoft doesn't have to pay the $3 billion and they get to fix their their stuff on the UK. That makes sense. It's it's going to happen. But go 100%. On. Yeah. yeah. Especially now. Um, so, yeah, it was just kind of this weird thing where I don't know why people wanted, like, were really hating on this game and wanted, it seems like they want, they wanted to Oh, fail. you mean the internet was angry about something? That's crazy. Yeah, but what did they pick? They would never do this to Elden Ring, ever. It's their beloved child. You know I, what I mean? Like, it all depends. Like, I, I would love to know what the cross section, cross section is of the people making those claims. Like, is it just like Xbox fanboys? Saying like, ah, oh, maybe Sony sucks at you know Final Fantasy. They'd never whatever. say that about God of War. Uh, I, well, yeah, I guess, but also Everyone God of War isn't making loves God of War. Yeah, I, I would have to look up God of War sales, but I mean, when you look at like Final Fantasy VII, that did what close to six million copies in three days or something like that. But again, the you're remake, going off yeah. of but you're going off of the PlayStation Four base, right? Um, and then I think Final Fantasy XV was play, PS4 exclusive, right? Or was it on Xbox as well? Whenever no, it was on Xbox as well. It was on everything. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Well, then there you go. So like, it's not even apples to apples. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll we'll see what it does whenever it comes out on PC. Yeah, I'm interested. Like, I think it has an extremely strong start, and then we'll see. Like, I know that like the 10 million mark is like kind of the milestone people try to hit. Like, that's a mm -hmm. very successful game, obviously. So like, we'll see when that because I think FF15 hit 10 million at a certain point. I mean, we can always check but, the research department thing. Yeah, but I guess what I'm trying to say is 3 million the first week is good. On one system, that's that's really good. And you have to have recouped your costs on that, right? Like, I would, I would imagine that this game was insanely expensive to make with all the fucking cutscenes. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Right? But yeah. 3 million copies, $70 price point, that's... That's got to at least break even. You would think so. Uh, like they're they're calling out stuff like, you know, uh, it was rated M, so you're cutting your audience that way. It's you know only on PS5, so you're cutting. Yeah, your but audience think about your audience, just, dude. Your audience at this point who played Final Fantasy when they were kids, yeah, or have children. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't know. I would love to see the numbers on like how many of the younger generation are playing Final Fantasy. It it doesn't seem like, yeah. I wonder if my nephew ever touched a final knows what Final Fantasy is right. or anything. It's yeah. just like maybe I'm way off base with the youth of today, <laughs> but it seems like that's not like the popular kind of game for the mainstream kid to to pick up. I guess. Yeah, and especially because there's nothing on this one. And I think this is what I don't want to put words in Jeff's mouth, but th there's not anything that looks uh, unique, I guess, in a way. Like, if you look at, like, I'm going to show you a picture of the, the main character and he, he's like glowing and has a sword and stuff. It's like that almost looks like prototype from PlayStation 3 from 10 years ago. Or whatever. He looks very generic. Like if you just took a screenshot of it, you wouldn't really know of like, oh, that's you know, like that's Cloud with his Buster Sword, and there's mm. you know, like uh, his classic like Mako background and, and all that stuff. You know, like it's 
16 and granted I haven't played a lot of 16 so obviously I don't I don't know but it's just like if you're a kid and you're going in you're looking at all this stuff I feel like it blends in yeah how do you discern with, with today's games I don't know well I mean like if you look at the marketing efforts for this game it was clear they went super hard because they had like a million trailers but I think Square always does this where they have a million trailers yeah but they even had like a demo yep that was like the entire well, uh, that's what I'm playing yeah yeah so that's like it's like the start of the game. They really needed this. To, like they were like, I don't know. That I I think that's how they try to counteract that maybe, where mm-hmm. it's like, no, nah, just try it. Like you literally have no reason not to try it. Yeah. And they, I guess they believe in themselves enough where it's like, no, it'll 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 grab them. The thing that kills me with the demo is I couldn't turn off blur, which is also I'm sure killing me with like 30 frames because it's 30. Well, if you frames say you have to blur. play it, then you just buy it. Yeah, but like deep down, I'm still kind of hoping that it's like. They announced it for like PC like <laughs> early next year or something. Right. After the After the Game of the Year. Yeah. Game of the Year discussion. I'll get to it, man. Dave the Diver just has my, Dude, has my number. Play right Dave now. the Diver, man. I'm <laughs> very happy for you. Do we wanna sorry, did you want to talk any, any more about Final Fantasy VII, or sixteen? I know we're gonna kind of do a segment on that. No, yeah, I, I wanna save it. I just thought it was an interesting thing because I saw a lot of like videos and discussions about that, and it was just super strange. I was curious yeah. what you thought. I just think it's the internet being the internet. That's how I would view it. Yeah. Like, no one cares about sale. Like, I mean, they'll, uh, I'm willing to bet they're going to do the same thing with uh, Starfield. Starfield. Oh, Starfield. Yeah. I thought you, you like, another exclusive. Yeah, I mean, Starfield's exclusive. Yeah, but they have PC. I mean, that's a, you know. I, yeah, I guess. I just think that, like, if you're... Then I, I, let me put it this way. I think the next game that we're going to hear, like, like shit posting about yeah, is going to yeah, be yeah. Starfield. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways. What were we going to say? I was going to say, I mean, did we want to talk about game, upcoming games that we're going to play? I know we're going to kind of do that to the end, but I, I feel like that's like a... Yeah, let's do it. Transition. Let's, let's do it. So... Currently, I'm playing FF16, yep. and I think I'm like 75% of the way through, so uh, I plan to knock it out this weekend. You're I'm mainlining up. it, right? Like, you're just... Nah, I'm doing all the side quests. Oh, you are? I love this game. Apparently, there, there are two <laughs> different versions of side quests. There's, like, side quests that you'll get something good out of, and side quests that are filler. Yep. You're just doing all of it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I Okay, small spoiler. Not spoiler for the game, for, spoiler for our segment. Okay. I really enjoy... The way they do, like the um, how do I want to put this? Like checking things off. Yeah. So. Okay. There's your little Tyler. Yeah. I, so I'm it's in. like it's like fuck like. You should pull. And it's you pull things, the Nate. It's like, dude. It's like Diablo and no, te- it's no Diablo, no. Tekken, and Spyro all, <laughs> yeah. all mixed up into one uh-huh. one package for you. Um. No, it's not that. But I do like and and they do a thing where it's like, you know, when you get to some things that are like point of no return. Yeah, oh, so they'll tell you. So like, it's like, oh, you, be careful. And you're it's not like, coming back here for a Shit, while. I only have three side quests. I'll just knock them out. Might yeah. as well. But yeah, anyways, I don't want to get too deep into it, but probably going to 100% of the game. That's awesome. I've never platinumed anything either. So I'm like, might as well just do yeah, this. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm playing FF16 yeah. currently. Um, You're playing Dave the Diver. <laughs> it sounds funny when you say it that way. Dude, it's yes. literally. I couldn't think of two games more opposite. It, yeah. Dave the Diver, pixelated, happy time. Yeah. Final Fantasy 16, Game of Thrones knockoff, CGI fest. As it stands now, that could be like, like we're both going to put them up for like Game of the Year. I just want I like assume. a fan artwork of like Clive and Dave back to back. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Fish monsters. That would be fantastic. Yeah, it's just that's what you need. <laughs> that would be awesome. Or or have have them calling in one of the aeons or whatever. What, what are they? Are they aeons? Uh, icons. 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 Spelled with an e for some reason. Is it aeons in Final Fantasy X? Yeah, it might be. Okay, so they, they, it's the same I... thing, but they call them different things. Um, more or less. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, calling in some like fish one, and then Dave's trying to like harpoon it or something. <laughs> 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 Oh, What's man. a rare fish in Dave the Diver? Is it like a special rare, names? A rare fish? Yeah, is it like special names for uh, them? So I don't want to spoil it. Okay, um, never mind. It, yeah, like a shark. Be, like a, a shark's are tougher to... Yeah. So like you have like predatory fish. 
So like most fish are docile. You can just capture them and they'll like run away from you or whatever. Yeah. And then there are the ones that will attack, attack you. Attack you, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Anyways, that's, that's what we need. That would be good. You could do it easily too because there's like sections in the Final Fantasy where they use the pixel artwork, which I think is really yeah. cool. Yeah. I thought that was like a really cool touch. So you could put a pixel Clive next to a pixel Dave. One of the, and this is how you know it's a good game, is whenever you go into mm. like the Steam community section yeah. in, the, in the Steam page, and you just look at all the fan art. Yeah. And it's just Dave, Dave the Diver, screwing everywhere. fish, man. Just boning those fish. No, uh, it's... Wait a sec. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, like people, people, it's the same thing with him. It's the same thing with... Uh, what was that, that super indie one that everyone, everyone loved? And I told you you needed to play it. Uh, Vampire Survivor. Under, under song? Undertale? Undertale, yeah. Yeah. Same oh, thing yeah, with that, where like the, the artwork is like insane. Classic. Call of the Lamb is another one. Like, yeah. yeah. But Dave the Diver... Dave, so that's the thing is Dave the Diver, I think, is in that echelon of like... Like when you talk Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley is something special. Yeah. From what I'm playing, Dave the Diver is like... Yeah. My Stardew Valley right wow. now. Wow. Yeah. It's high praise. Yeah. I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm, I love it. So you're playing Dave the Diver. I'm playing Final Fantasy <laughs> yeah. 16. We, we should really look up the budgets for each of this game to compare because that's hilarious. And team size, yeah. It really, like, I don't know if anything sums up our preferences more yeah. than those two games. Yep. About, about that, yeah. Um, so, anyways, talking about the rest of the year, so we're halfway through, a little bit more now. Um, on my list, I know you were talking about Revenant 2. Yeah, I look at them as we have our co-op games and we have our <clears throat> single-player games okay. that we're just kind of doing. So I think co-op Revenant Two that comes out Tuesday, getting decent review. It's a it's a purple game, so purple. you know good good strong smiley combat. guy. Uh, <laughs> we played the first. We played one session of the first game. I think we both were like, yeah, it's like good, like it's like fine. There was literally no reason to not play to it. not return to it, and yeah. we just did not for some reason. Right, but it was not. It was good. It looked good. It played yeah. good. Yeah. So I think if we're doing it for the fact of we need to see that this game is any good, we can rate it and we can make sure it's a game of the year. Cool. Uh, and then Street Fighter Six is another one. Street Fighter Six is a must. And I'm kind of derailing our conversation here, but this is what I do. I think Street Fighter Six looks much better than Tekken 8. I, we'll find out. Te Haven't you Tekken seen the gameplay? Of what? Tekken 8. Yeah, but it's all it's streaming it's like until, until you're seeing on your TV pound for pound like Tekken 8 is using Unreal 5. I don't know what engine Street Fighter is using, but I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll find R out. RE? Are they, oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I thought so. I mean, that would make sense. Again, I could make that up, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is because it's Capcom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess. Listen, man, I, but, I have <clears throat> Street Fighter 6 and Revenant or Remnant. To remnant, oh, remnant. I purchased I and remnant. downloaded on my computer right now. Right, I want to play Street Fighter Six so bad. Yeah, I love how I was like, dude. I think I really want to play Street Fighter Six, and you're like, oh, okay, John. And then one day you text me like, Street Fighter Six looks pretty good, man. That's because I, I finally like, oh, saw yeah, a okay, non, okay, like an uncompressed okay. version of it, where I'm like, oh, these animations are actually pretty neat. Like I maybe I have better. It. Maybe I can just tell better. Probably, I got my own eyes, man. Maybe I can just. I'm looking at all these it. previews on like a little four inch screen yeah my phone that's fair Tekken 8 just feels like I know Tekken has a very unique style to it that's yeah. more I don't even know what to call it it's more grounded it's definitely more grounded it's not but maybe it, it's more so than Street Fighter 100% maybe a little more stiff would you say is that it's less is that stylized fair? yeah yeah so I think this dude Street Fighter 6 just oozes style I love yeah the style of the game I love especially the character models just look excellent to me and the fluidity of the combat looks super cool yeah um and i was watching like the developer matches of tekken 8 today and king stole the goat by the way mm -hmm. and he looks great in this game <laughs> he's so fucking jacked but uh they all just get thicker yeah yeah <clears throat> and it's the same thing with like street fighter like Ryu is just like this just <laughs> yeah swollen <laughs> muscle old, old man yeah i don't know it just it looks good but it, I think Street Fighter Six is just really good. Tekken was always about the cutscenes, and they got away really? from that. Yeah. So like, if you look mm. at like a Tekken Three, where like Tekken Three you have it, and then they did like CGI cutscenes. By today's standards, yeah, the, the cutscenes don't look like that great. 
But at that time, it yeah. looked like a freaking movie. It's like a Final Fantasy esque. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like, whenever I play tech, I'm not doing it for necessarily the graphics, so to speak. Mm. Like I'm looking at it for I just want to get through this thing so I can watch the cutscenes. The problem is because graphics have come such a long way, a lot of developers are using in-engine game stuff to make the cutscenes. I don't think it's as strong as doing like a pre-rendered CGI. Mm. It's like Diablo, right? Like, yeah, all the cutscenes are like fine, but they're all in-engine until you get to the one at the very end where it's like, oh, this is where the budget came from. And this is amazing. That's what I'm looking for for Tekken. They might have it, they might not. We'll see. That'll be interesting. I think it's really cool. So do they have, maybe I don't know. So do they have... English voice actors for everyone or is everyone different because like some people were Japanese yeah and they were speaking Japanese and then mm-hmm. some people were speaking English yeah and they're like American and then I think there was a girl who was French and the guy who was Italian so do they have like is it different languages and you get the subtitles or can you that's, change it that's or? how it is I don't know if you can change it I think it was uh, tech, what is it Tekken 8 coming out so I guess yes. Tekken 7 yeah uh, yeah they were just Talking in their different languages, yeah. And everyone can just understand I think that's everyone. Super cool. It's I think neat. That's super yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I actually really like, games never do that. Yeah. And I think that's super neat. Yeah. Anyways, you have what's her face back from the dead. I don't even know the lore. Makes me want to get into June, the lore though. Probably June. Yeah. yeah. Jin's mum. Oh, King's the best. King's I'm great. Just play King. King, All right. King two. Let's be fair. The original King died. He was killed by ogre. He's a dude. God he's just war. a wrestler, right? Yeah. But like when he's doing his thing, he's like making. Jaguar noises. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, a, does, that's a shtick. But how does he do that? It's like, sounds like a tiger. Buddy, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> do you have a little voice like, box? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, he, that, that was just to set him apart in like Tekken and they just kind of continue. The thing. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Anyways, I'm kind of interested. Would you, okay, this is the last thing I'll say. Would you, I don't know anything about fighting games, but would you say it's fair to say that Tekken's the most technical Fighting game oh, versus a Street Fighter? I am not qualified to answer that question, and I don't want the flame in the heat that that actual fighting game people would would. Yeah, we need, like, I for. don't think any of our friends are, like, big fighting game guys, and I would be really curious to know that. Because, like, obviously Street Fighter is super technical, right? Because yeah. it's, like, that's kind of, like, one of the OGs or, or one of the ones that, like, like, when I think of fighting games, I think of, like, Street Fighter 2, mm-hmm. getting it put on the map, like the arcade kind of thing. Um, but Tekken always seems super complex and technical. Tekken, so I don't, and know I'm if biased, that's a fair right? So I, 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 I did not play a lot of Street Fighter. I'm, I have six. We'll play six. You know, we'll see. And like, I could very easily see myself saying like, yeah, six looks way better than Tekken. That, that's totally fine. My thing is, uh, with Tekken, you do get that 3D element, yeah. right? So like, if you can sidestep and you can, it's kind of like this. Uh, endless circle. I think like Tekken Four tried doing like walls where you like bash them into walls and stuff, and that didn't work out too well. So you kind of had this like infinity circle that you could just keep sidestepping around them. Um, they have a lot of throws. So like if, as you're doing the different throws, you can like break a throw and like throw them instead and stuff. And like they, I think in Seven they they introduced like the finishers and things, which then Street Fighter has too. And I'm, I, I don't know. I mean. Do I think it's more technical than like a Street Fighter? Probably not. Like I'm sure there's just as much, you know, skill and strategy and, and things like that. Uh, same with like Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah. Like you you have all that stuff in there too. That like I would feel like Mortal Kombat's less technical than the other two. You, I mean, you would think, but then you watch people play the game and it's like holy, like they're just on another level of. Oh, hundred percent. I'm yeah. I mean, it's. Look, you're going to have people, especially with fighting games, the skill expression is always going to be there. But yeah. yeah, again, I'm totally talking out of my element. I'm just, that was something I was curious about. Because I think, you know, one of the one of the difficult things is getting new people into the genre. Yeah. Because fighting games, are, you know, s- seem pretty um, <clears throat> scary <laughs> to get into. Cause it seems really complicated. Um, and from what I hear, Street Fighter Six does a pretty good job of kind of bridging the gap a little bit. The way that I look at it is the re and I, the, I mean part of this is like my cousin just played Tekken, so I was like my cousins liked it, so I like it. I just yeah, yeah. Have right. they older, that's how I do it. But the thing that stuck with me about Tekken that maybe Street Fighter didn't have was Tekken. Every button is a limb, mm. right? Okay. So if if you're looking on the Xbox controller, you have like your X and Y. Those are your punches. 
and you have A, B, those are your kicks. So if you do one punch, one kick, that's a throw. The other punch, other kick together, that's a throw. So automatically you know, I want to punch you. Cool. You're just you're hitting the one of those two buttons. You know every single character are just going to throw their fists around. Right. My understanding is with uh, Street Fighter, you have like your light attack, your heavy attack, at least it, back then. So like my head couldn't necessarily wrap around that because different characters would do a different light attack or heavy attack. And it, it didn't translate my mind as easily, which is why I gravitated more to attacking because it just, it mapped better. And I could generally say, I want to kick you. I'm just going to keep hitting X. No matter what character I have, I know if I hit X, I'm kicking you. Right. And it just connected with me. That's yeah. all. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. But anyways, that was a lot. I, I Mor- totally... Add Mortal Kombat to the list because that's another yeah, fighting game that we'll have to play together. Man. Are we going to be playing three fighting games this year? Is Tekken 8 coming out this year? It's supposed to. Wow. That's a shocker. Yeah, so Mortal Kombat, which looks really... I thought that looked fantastic. But can you imagine Tekken, Street Fighter, and Mortal Kombat all coming out the same year? Like, when you're talking about the games that are actually, like, launched, like, that's insane. This year is unbelievably stacked. Baldur's Gate is around the corner. And people... The hype is building for this game, yeah, Tyler. Dude, it is, this, it is Di- getting Diablo, crazy. Diablo is the best marketing for Baldur's Gate. Like the, <laughs> the memes of people being like, okay, and then Diablo, you see the sorcerer do his kind of teleport. It's a new one. It's kind of weird. Uh, I'm going ha- to go ahead and hit the teleport. It like blanks out the screen and then Baldur's Gate just comes up. He's like, okay, and it teleports you into uh, Baldur's Gate. Enjoy that game. <laughs> so it's just like, okay. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, the hype mounting for Baldur's Gate 3 is insane. It looks cool. Where, like, I was reading all those articles. I don't know if it was clickbaity or not, but it was, like, developers being like, this isn't the new standard for uh, RPGs or whatever. Oh, like, trying to head it off yeah, the pass. Yeah, like, we can't yeah. do this. Yeah, like, this is a, they had a lot of time and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. This might be really good. Yeah. I mean, Larian's great, right? Yeah. Like, we, Divinity... Original Sin 1 and 2. Honestly, Division, Divinity Original Sin 2 lauded as one of the best RPGs of all time yep. if you look at like those lists. Yeah, so, if you go on like, Steam uh, even and you just look at... If you sort it by like the ratings or whatever, like, yeah. yeah like, it's up there. Divinity 2 is up there. Um, and then they went back and like not remastered them, but like did like an ultimate version of them and just gave you that. For free. Yeah, yeah no, the, the, the way their philosophy and the way they do things... It's like it's Nate's like favorite studio by far. And yeah, I definitely understand why. Like they are all about the player, mm-hmm. um, and they do this thing too where it's open beta. I think it's been open beta for over a year, maybe oh, years easily. plural. Yeah, I think it's years. Um, and they just completely up upgrade the game, and you know that's. I think it was like twenty one. Yeah, yeah. I felt Nate, like Nate it's been forever. Yeah, it's, it's been a while, and it's like. Yeah, I guess other developers are, are complaining about that because they're like, well, technically it's already out. And it's like no different. Mm. It's kind of similar to like open access sort of, except this game's actually coming out. Yeah, but isn't <laughs> it only like the first part or something? And like not all the characters were there and not all the... Yeah, like, but they keep updating it. And I think it's they? just... It's yeah, available 100%. for playing? I thought so. That was my understanding oh, of I, it. I didn't realize that. I th- thought so. Because like when Nate was talking to us, he was like, oh, dude, they're adding cleric next yeah. week or whatever and maybe he was trying to downplay just how much was in the game like the, whenever i was talking to because like I, you know me like i'm on the fence of playing with you guys right where it's like right i really want to play the game i know that probably the way to play that game is with other people i don't it's know if just, that's true i don't know because i don't know if i'm going to be as invested uh with like a full gr- unless we're like super tight knit and everyone is like we have to be on the same we, page. Yeah, and <clears throat> we just all play it all differently. Something that kind of gets me as well with co-op like that. Like this seems like very immersive, mm-hmm. story dense. And like when you have your buddies playing, like I don't know, I feel obligated to talk to my friends when I'm on a call with them. Mm-hmm. But this is a game where it's like I probably like if I was playing by myself, I wouldn't be saying a word and I would be really engrossed. So right. like you get that kind of Yeah dichotomy there um like i kind of struggled with that with divinity whereas like i couldn't really focus on what people were saying well we were also all going out and doing different things or trying to steal stuff or being dumb like yeah if it was truly run almost like a D campaign where it's like okay it's the 
Is it actually four people? Three, I three, think three, so. Four, three, four people. Yeah. And we're all together and we don't separate. And it's like everything we do is like a group decision type thing. Right. Like a DNA campaign. Like, like, like it, campaign, it, yeah. I could see that being fun. You have to treat it like there's a DM. Yeah. And you have to like respect his time. Yeah. Because <laughs> like the way we played Divinity Original Sin 2, the DM would have left. <laughs> yeah. Well, the DM would have left and then like, and I don't, I don't hold, like, I mean, this is, Nate loves this game, so, like, why wouldn't you play it? But it's, like, you're going to play ahead or you're going to play other characters. You're going to, like, keep yeah. re-rolling and changing right. things and stuff. Right. And it's just, like... And that gets to you. It gets to, like, it, we're not experiencing it at the same time, which, again, is fine. But, like, I don't care who you are. Like, after you play something so many times, like, you're going to blow through something or you're going to know something's going to happen. So you're going to subconsciously prep for it sure. or do stuff. So, sure. so it's just, like... I, I don't know. I like we're just at different <clears throat> points of that game where it's just like, I, do I want to play it? Yes. I just don't know if it's like a four player co op thing for me or if it's just like I hunker down and it's just like an, a RPG where you're yeah. controlling all the characters. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I want to play with you guys. Like I enjoy playing with you guys. I yeah. think it's something we could all do together. I think it'd be cool. Um, like I could literally make Thok. Like that. That's, that's super awesome. appealing. Appealing to me. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's super cool. But oh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, Can you imagine you making Milo and make Thok, and we just like? I guarantee I won't be able to make Milo. You don't think? You cannot make a kid in that. I would be shocked if you could make a child. That would be, in that that game. Would be super. That cool, would be though. game How of cool the year. Would that be? That'd be game of the year. Yeah. That'd be fucking crazy, <laughs> That'd be dude. Really cool. It comes. You know what? It's going to come down to me. And I hope they can do this. You have to test the voice actors out. Yeah. Because if you only get a certain number, and this yeah. is what I hated about Diablo 4, was I didn't know the voice before I went in. Mm -hmm. Because if I know what voice I'm working with, I can now tailor my character to how I think that voice sounds. Yeah. Luckily, the rogue's pretty spot on to what you I, think. Yeah, I mean, the voice be. acting is really good in there. <laughs> no, but yeah, 100%. I, yeah. I made a, uh, a <clears throat> necromancer for. Well, sorry. Do we? I mean, we could keep going. Like, uh, Baldur's Gate Three, Starfield, Starfield yeah. which is, dude, the, there are some insane some games, and then Spider Man, games. which, yep, Spider Man Two is gonna be really good. I keep dismissing Spider Man, same, and I keep forgetting that I have a PlayStation, and I it is my duty. <laughs> to you have play. to play Spider Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have to play it just because like my PlayStation sits there so long without being touched. I'm like, yeah. okay, got to get the juice <laughs> in while it's good, you know. Yeah, like I'm really happy that I've been crushing there, Final there's Fantasy. Just not enough time. I That's what I'm like, saying. Yeah, I don't have time. So, like, with your argument about the purples versus the mighties, yeah, I don't have time for the purples, man. I need to see what these yeah. mighty guys are about because there's like 20 of them this year, but they're all coming out in like clumps. So that's the thing is like you finish Final Fantasy this weekend, right? Yeah. Then like we could knock out Remnant, I think, in probably a week, probably, or at least know what. But our that, rating is of it, you know. Initially, that was my plan to like, okay, now I'll jump into Street Fighter since that's or, been or out. Or Street Fighter. If you'd rather play Street Fighter, have Street Fighter 2. Like, whatever. Street Fighter 2? Yeah, Street Fighter 2. Oh, Street Fighter Dose. also. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But um, is there anything else we're forgetting? I mean, there's tons of stuff. Like, remember when Hogwarts came out this year and you just forgot that that was a game? Yeah, I always forget that that's a game. I can check it real quick. Um, let me check my notion. Our, oh, other games we're going to play. Yeah, I, I think we hit them all, but that's an insane list. And we're not even accounting for any other potential sleeper gems that will come out. Yeah. Like the indie games. You yeah. know what I mean? So that it's just like Oh, uh, I beat Storyteller. That was yeah, another I thing is that. I got 100% on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone should check out Storyteller if you can get it for like... That's like a $10 game. I think that's a clever game. I, I think that that's definitely in my top 10 this year just because of how clever it was. But, well, you know, man, I don't even know about that. Like, there's so many, uh, so many games. Um, yeah, dude, look at this. Dead Space, Hogwarts. I played Octopath. You didn't. Star Wars. I played a, yeah, you played a chunk. Yeah. Resident Evil. And then you were talking about Dredge. Um, Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right, and then all the games that we met, like you know what I mean, like th that's already what, like five, five or so that are. Dead Island Two came out this year. Uh, we have both of the League of Legends games that you got to play still. Dude, I, oh my god, 
Bolt Gun came out. Halls of Torment came out. <gasps> Dude, is Space Marine coming out this year? What is it? Space Marine 2? Uh, yes. I hope to God it's is not. It? I uh, hope it's not. I'll, ch- I'll check it right now. Because that would be another game we have to play. Was Bolt Gun any good? Did you finish that? So, uh, no, it's not. Okay. I'm going to... Not bad, but... Uh, so, yeah, one. Space Marine 2 initial release date is 2023. As of right Fuck. now. They don't have an actual date that could get pushed. Dude, but... So, Bolt, let me, so Bolt Gun is good. Okay. But have you played Doom? <laughs> like, yeah. Doom's really good. Right. It's tough to go back to... Like, if you like those, like, retro shooters and you're that guy, sure. Pick up Bolt Gun. Yeah. It's good. Um, I liked Bolt Gun. I refunded Bolt Gun <laughs> because <laughs> Doom Eternal it's just better. is just... It's better. It, it looks better. It plays better. It's more like there's more to do. There's more like I don't know. That's and fair. My brother-in-law is probably cringing right now if you were to hear it. But I, is I just, he a big bolt gun guy? He, dude, he hey, you, you get bolt gun. You playing bolt gun? It's like, <laughs> it's like yeah, man. I got it. We'll, we'll see. I finally got around to playing it. It's like it's cool. Does I he like through. Doom? He must love Doom. He liked Doom. Yeah, but he loved Doom. Well, he he really likes Warhammer. Oh, so gotcha, gotcha. You, you need that yeah. Warhammer and retro, and it's like. It, it's cool. I get it. Completely. Doom Eternal is just That's me so good. with any MMO. Yeah. I need the universe. I need to care. Like the Star Wars MMO, done. In. Yeah. I'm in. Yep. If there was a Warhammer MMO, I'm sure I'd be in there too. <laughs> that actually sounds really sick. I'm sure there will be at some point. That would be really difficult to pull <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess they did. Um, fuck. What was it called? <clears throat> the uh, sh- Tom Clancy one. MMO? Yeah. Blanking. Because it was a shooter. Wasn't it Tom Clancy? There's they did two of them. Mag. There's two of them. No, it's an MMO, I swear. I don't know. What was it called? What was a it called? Tom the- Clancy MMO. I thought it was Tom Clancy. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's just a shooter. What- Planet Side? No. No. <laughs> what? Planet Side's an MMO shooter. Is it technically an MMO? Yeah. See, MMO. Division, Mass- massively the division. multiplayer online. Oh, that's not an MMO. Yes, it is. No. Yes, it is. I looked up Tom Clancy MMO. Guess what came up? That's the division. That's not classified as an MMO, though. Yes, it is. No. Yes, it is. Massively multiplayer online. I thought it was. No. Genres: open world, third person shooter, massively multiplayer online role playing game. Google. Pff, what? Okay. Hold on. Dude. Yes. It. How is it not? You're in the world with all of the other people. I mean, I don't understand. You're yeah, but you're really not. Like like uh how many players are in I don't know why I said Division FIFA <laughs> Division 2 at one time. That's like saying Sea of Thieves is an MMO. Like it's it's really not. The maximum team is 4 players. That's a party. Yeah, but, was, but you're not that, coming up not, against that many parties, is what I'm saying. That's like the maximum team for Sea of Thieves is four players. So you're saying and just because there isn't the server, a so raid, it's not an MMO? No, I'm saying Sea of Thieves has 24 players on a server at one given point. Do you think that's an MMO? Well, how many players are on the server? You said four to a team. That doesn't Four to a team, but you're not running How many teams any, are there? Uh, probably less than six teams. If you're in like the dark zone, you're running around and stuff. I don't I'm see. Talking about the regular like map. Yeah, like you have a hub where you know, like uh, Destiny, right? Where yeah. it's like, oh, here's the hub. Everyone's just running around yeah. there, and you run out. Like that's more of an MMO than Sea of Thieves, because Sea of Thieves, there's just 24 people on the server. Yeah, but this is like the hub. Everyone's there, and then, then you then go, go into your in the instance. World. Yeah, well, that's Guild Wars. That's Guild Wars. Uh, all right. You're in the hub world, and then you go into your instance. I guess. Uh, that's literally what I, happens. Yeah. I I mean, sure. Fair enough. I don't like this. Fair enough. Buffalo chicken pizza isn't pizza. Get out of here. Also, yeah, that's fair, too. Wrecked you on that one. Yeah. That one, you're doomed forever. Yeah, I, I still believe it. But you can't. I can't bring you up to space and show you that the Earth is round, and you still think it's flat. That's That can't be that's true. That's different. No, it's, it's not. I, I, I checkmated you. 
But how can you know the earth is round? Okay, we can't go down. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, all right. So this is the games we're playing. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a lot. But I, I so my whole thing is I really want to play Remnant. Okay, let's play Remnant for like an hour, refund it, then play Street Fighter 6 cuz that's a good game. We can but also Remnant's 40 bucks. Green Man Gaming. Green Man. Fucking Green Man. Do you want to gaming. spend $10? I'll less. let you know. Let me think about it. All right. Let me think about it. I have both. So if you want to do Street Fighter first, let's do Street Fighter. I no, think you we want to do Re- Remnant. I have them both installed. Who cares? Well, you just said I want to do Remnant. I am looking forward to Remnant more than Street Fighter. Do you, you think I'm going to be better at Street Fighter than you? Okay, we'll do Street Fighter. Oh, just kidding. That <laughs> no, was I'm such a just bait. Pound you into that the was ground. such a bait. You that's, will. That's I fine. am so bad. <laughs> the last Street fighting Fighter game, is. The <laughs> last fighting game I played. Like, seriously. Yeah. Soul Calibur 2. Great. I'm doomed. No, Soul Calibur is closer to Street Fighter than it is Tekken, I think. Even though Tekken and Soul Calibur they are technically They to come out with combined. a good Soul. Because that, like, yours was Tekken. I loved Soul Calibur. Hey, like, how she was, was in Soul Calibur? Which one? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. Four? I stopped after three. I played like two and three. I think Heihachi was in there. It's the same time like Yoda and Vader were in there. In Soul Calibur? Yeah. Why are fighting games so weird? Oh, dude, they had <laughs> freaking so What's-His-Face from Walking Dead with the Lucille in bat or whatever. Or Soul Calibur. In Tekken. Oh, in Tekken? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they that's brought right. the Street Fighter guy into Tekken. They brought like... Are the, they just all trying to be Smash or what? I, dude, I don't know. The freaking <laughs> the Street Fighter guy, uh, not Zangi, uh, I forget his name now. Anyway, what one the of wrestler the wrestler guy? No, no, no. That's that's Zangi. Uh, the dude with like the the balls on his is like a ball necklace. Oh, the old guy. Yeah. Um, who spits fire and shit? Oh, I don't know. Okay, I think I know. I think about. I think it's Street Fighter is doing that. Anyway, yeah, yeah. But like he killed Dalsum. No. Okay. Uh, research it on, department. Tekken Seven. I thought Street Fighter, because they did like Street Fighter X Tekken X and, yeah, and all that stuff. I didn't yeah. know that they did crossovers. That's actually kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I'd love to see what this Google search is. By the way, Street I, Fighter character with balls on tech, his chest. Uh, Tekken. Uh, st- oh wait, Tekken Seven Street Fighter. Let's call it just cameo. Take it, yeah, 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 that makes sense. There we go. And that's safe. I just, search. I can't think of. Oh, Akuma. I couldn't Akuma? think of his name. Akuma. Akuma. Let me because see a picture. Kuma is a. It's bear in Japanese. Yeah. Well, that's he's a bear. So this oh, is really? Akuma. A, a bear. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This is Akuma from Street Fighter. Yeah. He killed Heihachi's like wife, or something. What? Yeah. So it's that's canon. How, yes, that's how they got him into it. Was like he was from the beginning. It wasn't like a DLC character. It was like. He came in. This is a major canon story arc. Like, hey, Hachi loved one person, and this guy comes in and murders her. Anyway, it's it, dude. Tekken's wild. Wait, but there's also Kuma, which is an actual grizzly bear. Oh yeah, in yeah, Tekken. In Tekken, yeah. Who loves Panda, <laughs> which is a, set, a different costume, and then they actually they're different characters. So oh, Kuma, crazy. whenever you win as Kuma. The cutscene is always him trying to woo Panda. <laughs> so in like, I'm making this up, but like Tekken 3, <laughs> you see Panda and Ling Xiaoyu, who's like, this just like schoolgirl or whatever. Yeah. Panda's her pet, right? Yeah. And massive panda bear. Right. And they're just walking down and stuff. And then you see Kuma like stalking and like being all angry and stuff. And he's getting ready to pounce, right? It just keeps cutting back and forth in this like real Japanese way. And then all of a sudden you see him like lunge and then he just he's holding a bouquet of flowers out to Panda, and then they just walk by. You just hear like wind rustling, and then it just cuts. And it's like those wacky cutscenes from Tekken. That's why I love it so much. And you don't like anime? Yeah, I don't know. The, it's, it's your it's brain not. makes zero sense. So to me. one of one of Ling's cutscenes in one of the Tekken games is literally like anime cartoon. Yeah, it, it's wild, Animation. dude. It's so. Yeah, it's, and, you, and you hate anime, by the way. Brian Fury is a zombie. Like it's a cop. He died. He was a dirty cop. He got killed, and then Doctor Baskanovich, who's just a random doctor, who his whole shtick is he just falls over because he's so old. 
So like he'll be fighting and then he'll just fall over and then fight from the ground. That's like his fighting style. Wow. He'll just kick you and stuff. But he put a generator in Brian Fury, turned him into a zombie, resurrected him. And now Brian Fury, like what his cutscene in Tekken 3 is the Mishima Corp is like, we have to stop this guy because he, we shouldn't have zombies. <laughs> so they're all shooting him. And uh, he's like just getting like, like falls down. And they're like, okay, we killed him. He gets back up and they start laying into him with like machine guns and stuff. And he just runs. A tank rolls down like a street, shoots a shell at him, explodes. You see him run through the fire, jump onto the tank, rip the top of like this Abrams tank off, and then throw it onto the army that explodes that we're shooting him. Wow. That's it, like that's, 10 out of 10. that's tech. <laughs> Oh, it's so stupid. I, I love, love when you go deep into your Tekken lore, dude. But there, like, it's, it's, the it's so stupid. And every little char- like every character is just like has its own interacted. Thing. Yeah, like Paul and Law are all like. That's what I actually. Stuff. Well, two. There's two points here. One, I have a perfect segue, so I'm not going to get too far away from this. But that's what I kind of don't like about Street Fighter is I love when characters interact, mm-hmm. and I think in Street Fighter it's just they have their saying or whatever. I don't know them deep enough, but they do that in Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat's great. The yeah. DC, yeah, DC, like, is like great. DC is my favorite because I, I like I actually know those characters. Yeah, but. Tekken does it. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of zombies, I watched Zombieland last night. Oh, good segue. Great okay. segue. Yeah. I had to. And those are the games we're playing. Yeah, those Zombieland. are the games. Uh, did that have a game? Probably not. Maybe Zombieland. Yeah, it did. It was uh, terrible. Right? Maybe it would be it, like I'm thinking like a mobile game. Maybe I'm, uh, I might yeah, be making maybe. that up. I don't think there's ever been a zombie mobile game. Now that I'm thinking about it, a, a zombie <laughs> mobile game. <laughs> That's a joke. Um, yeah, those are the games we're playing. So probably Revenant next. Speaking of zombies, I watched Zombie Land last night. So it was one of those. I was telling Tyler before the podcast. It was one of those weird situations where I was like, "Oh yeah, I've totally seen this movie." And then I was like watching it because it's a PS4 game, by the way. It's called Zombie Land Double Tap. Oh, it's probably so bad. It's top down, just top down twin stick. God. Anyways, well, those games aren't necessarily bad. Yeah, I'm fine. sure that's terrible. That Movie license great. games are just the bottom of the barrel. Yes. Um, one of those situations, like, surely I've seen this. Like, everyone's seen this. And yeah. it's like a classic. And I was watching it last night because my YouTube algorithm overlords were telling me to. You and watched the whole movie on YouTube? No, not on YouTube. But, like, oh, I was okay. getting clips. And I was oh, like, oh, gotcha. yeah. So I have a friend who that. has all the movies ever. Yeah. And uh, I was like, maybe I haven't seen this. Like Bill Murray shows up, I was like, I don't fucking remember this part. This is amazing. Eddie regrets maybe Garfield. <laughs> like, that awesome. was the greatest scene. Actually, my yeah. favorite part was, uh, oh my god, the movie's really funny. I was like, it's been a while since I laughed out loud to a movie. Mm-hmm. Maybe the last one was actually a Bill Murray movie that you made me watch. <laughs> yeah. So that's made that's me too little. Yeah, poetic. That's a great movie, by the yeah. way. I am on board that movie a hundred percent. Good. That's a fantastic movie. Anyways. Um, it was when they were in his house and he kills Bill Murray. Well, this is after him. Spoilers. Spoilers. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> the movie came out in 2009. Yeah, that's crazy. Fuck. Um, what was I even going to say? It's oh, like it's e. when he's Eisenberg. about to get with what's her face? Emma Stone. Yeah. She's super hot, by the way. Um, <laughs> just in case you didn't know. Anyway, <laughs> okay. so he's about to make out with her or whatever. And then uh, what's his face comes in and like cock box him. No. Oh, uh, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. I was going to say Woody Allen. Two different guys. Different. Yep. Anyways, the next morning when they're like, I think they let, I think Emma Stone and her sister leaves. Mm-hmm. And then like, um, what's his face? Columbus is like, I forget what, dude, I'm butchering this so hard, but it was <laughs> the like funniest to- fucking thing. <laughs> he was like, I forget what the line is. It was so good. He was like, dude, you're like, the fucking biggest, he essentially says, like, you're the biggest cock block ever, but he says it in a really funny way. Yeah. And then, what are you, Harold? It's just like, hey. And she got, that was the funniest part. I know it doesn't sound funny. <laughs> okay. But the way he delivered that, hey. Yeah. Like, he was really hurt by the comment. <laughs> After you see him, the whole movie just fucking destroying everything. It was yeah. so funny. Woody Harrelson's great. What a great cast for that movie. Perfect. Perfectly. Oh, weird. Yeah. But, like, it weirdly worked. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, probably going to queue up the second one tonight. Let me know how that one is. I, I didn't see that one. I was actually like, I thought more happened. 
So maybe I'm thinking, I, maybe I saw the second one and I like just put all my memories into that it, yeah. one and sure. they all kind of converge. Not a lot happens in the first movie. No. It's a great movie. It's very funny. There is virtually zero plot to that movie. It is <laughs> actually quite yeah. amazing how highly rated the movie is with having zero plot. I mean, it's a point, right? I That's a movie where I watched it, wasn't big on it at all. And every time I see it past that, I get more and more like a warm up to it. It gets a little better. Yeah. I just don't love zombie movies, gore, that sort of thing. Yeah. I think it's... Even if it's comedy. Like, even yeah. the, uh, like Simon Pegg in, in uh, Shaun of the Dead and stuff like that. Right. Like I'm still not, like... I don't love it. Like, it's funny. I like them, but... It's very gory. Yeah. Very gory. I like the practical effects, though. Yeah. I always have a lot of respect, and zombie movies can do that really well, mm-hmm. where, like, all those guys in makeup and the fucking gallons of fake blood that they use. Dude, like, I can't think of anything with crazier practical effects than the boys. Like, the boys? That that has, like, ruined me forever. Yeah. What do you mean? In terms of just, like... There's there's a fair amount of CGI, too. Oh, yeah. No, I know. know. I'm just saying, like, I shouldn't have said practical effects. Oh. As far as, like, gore and realism and just, like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. No, when I say practical effects, I mean, like... Like actual, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. Okay, yeah. you're talking about just destruction. I yes, I said practical effects. I meant just yeah. When Homelander lasers someone yeah. in half, it is. Brutal. Of course, a lot of that is practical effects too, though. Didn't they win a lot of awards for that? Well, the lasers aren't. Well, sure, but like <laughs> the the body, it's like just goop. I think post fucked. Yes, <laughs> but. But while it's happening, yeah, it has to be all CGI'd, sure. right? Maybe. I don't know. I, maybe not. I don't know. You're probably right. The best practical effect, well, hmm. Is it Star Wars or is it Lord of the Rings? Uh, In terms of moving the industry forward, I would have to say Star, Star Wars. Wars yeah. yeah. But when you're looking at The pod racing everything. always gets me. <laughs> that's like my favorite thing ever. Even though that that's like that's cool, but also like... I'm talking original trilogy when they're like, no, 100%. we had to rotoscope this yep. actual model out and do frame by frame and then overlay that to get this. Li- and like, even then they were like pointing out like, eh, this, this isn't perfect here. And this isn't per-. now it's like we hit and tie fighter. <laughs> <laughs> we have a pre rendered. Yeah. I don't know. Million t- no, a hundred percent. Lord of the Rings is sick as far as like the perspective stuff. That that's really, dude. The really orcs cool. are crazy. Yeah, but that's all practical effects. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, practical effects are the way to do it. Yeah, but that's like make. Uh, when I'm saying practical effects, I'm talking like you're using yeah, effects to conflated. make something yeah. else. Like orcs are just like that was really good makeup. It, yeah, am I conflating the two? I think are so. practical effects different than makeup because I guess my mind is like. These days, the orcs would be CGI, right? So, like, my mind is like, yeah. it's practical effects because we're using real people. <laughs> I <laughs> dress up as orcs. I guess. I when I think of practical effects, I think more of this was a miniature that we blew up yeah. and just ran a camera down okay. it, and that was practical. So let me it correct wasn't myself. CGI'd. The costuming is very good. Yeah, in Zombieland, Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> and Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Not in that order. <laughs> it's everything's good. Every all all cinema. Speaking of cinema, you going to see Oppenheimer and, and Barbie? I heard Barbie's really good. I I want to see both. Same night. I would do same night. <laughs> um, I still have to see Mission Impossible. Well, you do that with your mom, though, right? I'm doing that with my mom. Yeah. And I have to binge all of them, so I'm like in it. Okay. That so, makes sense. Working on that. And then, um, yeah, I'll go see Barbie with you. That seems like a cool bro activity. Interesting you went straight to Barbie and not Oppenheimer. <laughs> I am much more intrigued by Barbie than Oppenheimer. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. Who is Oppenheimer? See a guy who did something? Atomic, atomic bomb? I thought that was Einstein. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Barbie it is Barbie it is Tell me when you want to go I love Barbie <laughs> You gotta knock out Final Fantasy But we can We can figure that out Cause I, I'm assuming Both of those are gonna be Like dude Social media is blowing up With those So what? I assume the theaters Are gonna be packed With Oppenheimer and Barbie Yeah maybe Sunday You don't like I'm, doing things On Sunday No I do Sunday I just 
I'm, I'm fine with Sunday. You just got to let me know. I'm going to play during the day. Like, I'm going to play all day tomorrow, Final Fantasy, and all day Sunday, and then maybe Sunday night. Well, Sunday night I do dinner with my family, so we'll figure it out. We don't bring have to make bring plans him. on the... Bring them. To Barbie. Bring them to Barbie. Ugh. That would pass Tyler's uh, childhood check. Mm, no? No. Too I'm, much commercialism? No, I'm pretty sure Barbie is going to be very sexualized and like... It's rated PG. humor. No. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Bet. No. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll give is you it rated R? There's no, no way it's no, rated it's, R. It's got to be PG-13. There's no way it's... PG. <laughs> yeah, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's... Dude, look at that. What? If, if you Google Barbie? Bar- Barbie. You think they paid for that? They had to have. Yeah. So I Googled Barbie... And pink sparkles went all over Google. Wow. And the whole page is pink. Wow, that's cool. That's something. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has a 90% right now. That's really good. It's, it's 90% critics and 89% fans. Wow. The fans and critics agree. That's when you know it's good, dude. Barbie's where it's at. Oh my we got to go God. see Barbie, bro. Margot Robbie, she's I'm, the good. I'm looking up She's the best. real quick. I love Margot Robbie. Oppenheimer. 93% critics, 94% audience. Okay, maybe we got to see that first. Well, that's uh, Thomas Shelby, right? It's Thomas Shelby? Yeah. It's uh, the Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne's in this? It's Iron Man. Who? Robert Downey Jr. Uh, I know, okay. I know. Yeah, I Matt Damon, kidding. Robert Downey Jr. Fuck. Okay, we got to yeah. see that. Damn it. Yeah. Fuck. It's a good cast. But what about... Who's playing Ken? Totally forgot. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell me. <laughs> no, I know who it is. Who's playing Ken? I know who Guy it is. from the notebook? I know who it is. I just can't uh, think of his name. Blade? Blade? No, not Blade. I'm sorry. Blade Runner. Blade Runner yeah. 2042? Yeah. Great movie. Yeah. Great movie. Is that a sequel? Yeah. Didn't know that until like years later. I finally got through Blade 1 and it was pretty... Or Blade 1. Blade, uh, Blade Runner 1. It was, seen Blade? it was good. I, I watched Blade Runner and the director's cut or whatever, then watched 2042 right after. Yeah. And it was nice. Really good. Yeah. Okay. You're just, you're giving up? You're not. On what? On a name? Oh, I thought we were past that. Oh. Embarrassing <laughs> me. Um, it is, his name is. Let's see if I can give you some. Uh, his name is. This is so bad because he's really popular. I'm trying to think of like a. It's right on the tip of my tongue, too. You're, you're a silly goose? Does that help? Ryan Gosling. There it is. Okay. I was oh. like, is that going to give it to you? Okay. You're a silly goose. You're a, little, you're a little silly goose, Ryan. I am a silly goose. All right. I can't believe I didn't remember Ryan Gosling. Oh, he's so attractive. Yeah. 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 He, he has fun. I like his personality more than his looks. That's fair. Like Henry Cavill. Well, that's a, that's no a bad way. example. Cause Henry Cavill's I, I love personality is yeah, the Henry, best. Henry Cavill is, looks... Dude, Henry Cavill is like... No one looks better than him. I'm a Brad Pitt guy. You think Brad... Well, here's the thing. Maybe Brad Pitt's like prime. Yeah. But Brad Pitt now does not hold a candle to Henry Cavill. Let's see how Henry Cavill looks when he's Brad Pitt's age. Done. Cheeseburger. That's all I'm saying. 20 year cheeseburger. Sure, 20 year cheeseburger. Old, actually, that, that's probably not too, too far off. I mean, really? It might only be, yeah. I thought well, Brad Pitt was like pretty old, actually. Let's see how old Henry Cavill is. This is great, great pod. So Henry Cavill's 40. Okay. Man. On the dot? Dude, I'm going to be 40 in like 10 years? Five years. I thought you were 30. Didn't you just turn 30? I'm going to be 35 in September. Nah, you're 30 in my book. Thanks, man. <laughs> I thought we just did something for you for your 30th birthday. Wasn't that the pool? No. I think that was. That was like five years ago, maybe. We did something, didn't we? Nope. Oh, okay. We did, uh, my 30th was here. We, had, we, we did Mario Kart. That's what the board is, That's right? What the board is, yeah. Wow. Uh, Brad Pitt's 59, so we got to wait 20 years, 19 years. Yeah, dude. He's, yeah. He looks f- insane. He looks good for nine, they're 59. He's going to be on Medicare soon. Yeah. And he's going to look great. He's going to be the best looking Medicare member we've ever had. <laughs> and we're going to have like a sign up. right. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay. Right. Um, we have to talk about Diablo. 
Yeah. Do we have anything else to talk about? I do. Okay. I had a rant, but I'm not going to do it. And then I had an assignment for you, but I think I'm going to save that as well. <laughs> okay. Well, the assi- I wasn't sure exactly what I want to make you do, and it might be off the wall. And if I do that one, there's a little bit of a preface with it as well that I want to make sure I have prepared. I have mostly prepared, but I want to make sure I'm... Is this the anime? No. Oh, because you had me pumped up. You're like, I, I have an anime for you. You're going to try that, and if it doesn't I work out... I should do that. I should just fucking do that, but... All right. Stay tuned until the end of the episode. I might make Tyler just do that. Anyways, <laughs> you might have just dug your grave. <laughs> oh, you should have no. never even brought that up. All right. I was going to give you a nice, easy softball. Give me a softball. No, a I softie. can't. But there's a, there's a preface to it. Okay. Well, hold it off till next week. That's fine. Okay. Anyways, before we talk about Diablo, I want to talk about Civilization Six. Yeah. So I played Civ Six this week with the research department. Super fun. Mm-hmm. So Civ Six has been out for a while, and I've had Civ Six for a while. I played a lot of Civ Five, maybe not a ton, but a lot of Civ Five. I love Civ Five, and then I could never get into Civ Six. And this was the first time I actually got into it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's super. It, it reminds me of Civ Five when I first played, like so overwhelming. There's so many mechanics to like keep a hold of and everything like that. And it just gets crazy as you get obviously progress further and further in the game. You get more and more cities, yeah. more mechanics open up, more inventions are made. It gets wild. But it's starting to come back to me. I was playing as shit. Who was I? The Ottomans. Okay. I was playing as the Ottoman Empire. So they're very um, warfare centric civ. And I hate warfare. I always go like science or culture. Like I'm a very peaceful guy. Did you do random or you? you yeah, we always do random. Yeah. Always do random. That makes sense. So I got Ottoman Empire. So at first I was like, okay, maybe I can try to go science here. But then there's. CPU is pissing me off, so I just wiped them off the face of the earth. Yeah. And now I'm kind of on a warpath. Much, war much path. like the real... Yeah, I kind of am following in footsteps. Although I'm past, so we're past World War One. I. I have like, I'm... Or I'm like right there, maybe. Mm-hmm. So I'm either going to die like the Ottomans, or we're going to get past the hump, and we're going to take okay. over the world. So anyways, it was kind of surprising. I don't usually go for the domination victory, but... I'm stacked. Are you you're playing against Calvin? Um, we're has playing he, the same game. He so, sent, yeah, so has yeah. he sent like envoys of peace yet? And yeah, like yeah. That so and, what we usually do is we usually team up against the computer. Yeah, and usually it's me funding his wars. Uh huh. Like I usually just have an insane economy because I just build tall, which means I have a few number of cities that are just super huge and rich. Yeah. This time, it's the other way around. He's funding me, and I'm taking over the world, expanding. and I am the yeah. superpower. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But Civ Six is a lot of fun. I think it's in a kind of similar situation as Diablo, where when Civ Six first came out, it was not as good as the current state of Civ Five because mm-hmm. there were so many expansions and things added to Civ Five over the years and mechanics. And now Civ Six has a couple big expansions. I think they have two big expansions out. And I would say... Comparable or better than Civ Five at this point. Nice. Okay. Might be. So um, that was a lot of fun. Just wanted to talk about my, about my experience with that. And if you ever want to play Civ Six, you're more than welcome to. I teach you the ropes. I've said it multiple times. I think uh, Harper would like to play it too. Yeah, I think like getting all the boys together to play yeah. a game of Civ. Like that's a day where like nobody's doing anything though, and we just mm-hmm. spend the whole day playing Civ. Yeah, that's like one of those kind of things. But I think that would be a ton of fun. I would love, I mean, we talked about this where it's like we have like make an event out of it and stream it and have like roles and stuff. Oh, yeah. No, that we're would like be God super fun. and we yeah. give like mini games and prizes to people. <laughs> yeah. Like that would be so involved. That's the dream. But I think just having a chill day with the you boys. Get, like paid off it. and like, yeah, yeah exactly we, could, we could have some fun stuff. Oh, on my there. God. Yeah. Like secret challenges, like first person who discovers Buddhism gets the X the, yeah. <laughs> reward and nobody knows like someone will just randomly pick Buddhism when yeah. they discover religion. It's like ding, ding, ding. You picked correct. Yep. And See, the, I, <laughs> I love Civ because it is the, and, and this is coming from an RTS guy, but like I love it because it is turn-based. You can think, you can strategize, you can kind of take a minute to pick your moves and pick your, your kind of lane that you want to go and everything, which I think is really cool. It would be so fun with a lot of friends too, because like yeah. you there's such something so unique about actually conversing with another person. Mm-hmm. 
you get the trades going, you get the betrayals. Like that's the yeah. fun part, and it just doesn't hit the same with the AI. Yep. Someday it will, but as of right now, it's like that's where the it's at, and I think that would be so much fun. Even doing something where like if you want to do like uh, anything above table, that's totally fine. But anything under table, it's like you have to like message them in Discord. You well, that's but I, I almost would say like there would be a rule where it's like you're allowed to do it under the table, but you have to announce that you're sending it a message to somebody. You don't have to say or, what the message is, but it's just like, hey, or John and Tyler are talking. We don't know what they're talking about. but Or we make different rooms in Discord. Yeah. So two people would just drop all of a sudden, <laughs> and then everyone could check, see who, oh, shit, Tyler and John are the yeah. other room, dude. That would be really cool. And then it's like locked. Like there's only two people max or yep. something. So some, nobody can. Yeah. yeah. That would be, really be fun. Neat. That'd be really cool. Yeah. It's yeah. just like all of a sudden. All dude, just, I'd, be, I'd be down. I know Kyle and Gerard. Like, I don't remember if Nate uh, enjoyed that or not, but. We could we could have some fun. We could yeah, that, that would be like a once. I would love it to be like an annual. Yeah, because I think we can get Gerard for one day a year. Just say hey. Oh, Gerard would. Out. He would love, dude. He love. If we could that. get a weekend, that'd be perfect. But at least one day, because yeah. I would love to finish a game. And I think if we do it on like quick setting, we could probably do it in one day. And if we do it on normal, maybe it'd take like two days. But I don't know, dude. Gerard, like when, when we were <laughs> used to be going, like actually went to soccer games uh like we go to like ohio or some three hour trip and the moment gerard realized that siv was on the uh the switch he's just in the back of the car just like that's all he did that's it was just awesome. for three hours i'd love to, to do it yeah. i think we could get a decent number of people i think we could get you me calvin uh gerard kyle john that's six mm-hmm. mike no mike i don't know if mike would play that so potentially nate or mike that would get us to eight, which would be a great game. Maybe or we could Jeff, do six. Jeff could maybe play. I don't know if he, if he would do Jeff, it. maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe Ryan. Yeah. So, yeah, we could potentially, if we could get the eight to ten, that's the perfect amount. I think we could definitely do six, although I might want to add like a NPC or two just yeah. to make things interesting. That'd be fun. All right. I've talked too much about that. Civ Six is a great game. Yes. Diablo 4 is also a great game. I think it's a good game. What's been going on? There was a fireside chat. So a couple weeks ago, a week ago. Diablo. Let me give you a quick, all right, backstory. Quick backstory. <clears throat> Diablo came out. You and I raided yep. it. We yep. beat the campaign. We got everything through. Uh, July twentieth, season one starts. July eighteenth, they put the patch in. You see all the patch notes come through on like what the changes are and what's happening and everything like that. Right. Before that. They, they heard the, the community feedback and they said, hey, we hear you. Uh, we're going to make dungeons give more XP. Uh, so the Nightmare Dungeons will be more rewarding. Uh, we're going to give you more XP for the Tree of Whispers. We're going to uh, buff a lot of stuff. They're, they're just like, here, we'll, we'll make the end game better, right? So now season one comes out and you start looking at all of the changes. And essentially what they did is... Every like main build in the game, more or less. I think there are a couple like the necromancer room we didn't get touched as much, but like the sorcerers got decimated. My guy, my barbarian is unplayable. Really? So like the the thing they did is they they upped the cooldowns, they made the enemies harder, they made you squishier, they like they cut the XP like an insane amount. So the way that it's scaled, I could bring you, I brought you into like my tier <clears throat> four or whatever. I brought John into the tier four just to like level him up real quick. Uh, power leveling is like gone. Like you can't now. So it's all based off of level and where you are and different things like that. Like now you have to be level 40 to do the, the first capstone dungeon. You have to be level, I don't know, like 60 to do the second capstone dungeon. So like you can't skip things. You can't do anything. Uh, before it was like if it was like within one level or two levels of you or something before I'm making this up slightly, but it's like you used to get like 15%. Now you get 1.5%. And like the max percentage you can get on doing like the hardest stuff is a 20% bonus, which is insane. So if you play if you fight something that's like 10 levels higher than you, which you were you were getting like 50% bonus or 100% bonus, some crazy amount, now you're getting 20%. 
So they just they made everything harder. They cut the the experience from the tree of whispers. They made the hell tides harder. They made the the chests more expensive. Uh, so like there, there was like a higher risk reward for like dying in the hell tide and stuff like that. So it's just like they made a lot of things not fun. And a lot of the builds that people were using, um, they so like some of them like if it's a bug and people are exploiting a bug, I get you fix the bug. People are pissed, whatever. But what they did is they started like nerfing everything. So instead of bringing up skills that maybe weren't as good to try to get them in parity, they just nerfed everything. But then they also made the enemies harder. So it was like people on the outside were just like, "What are you doing? Like you just nuked everything." Yeah. Um. So anyway, they did all that. They heard they, it was a huge outcry. They got review bomb. It's like a, a three now on Metacritic or something. Like it just got. That's what destroyed. I was going to talk about. Like yeah. I saw. This is what I saw. Yeah, yeah. The aftermath and people were not happy. Um, but the, this hasn't even come out yet, correct? It was out. So oh, okay. So, so the so patch hit on the 18th. Okay. So if you play the Eternal Realm, you could see a lot of this stuff on the Eternal Realm. The season started on the 20th. So when you started a new character, they, so technically it started yesterday. Yeah. Uh, from when we're recording this. Yes. But yeah. So Thursday last week. So people week, know that it's shit. They played they, it. They knew it a couple days ahead of time. Because they okay, yeah, the saw it server. and they were like, what's going on? Yeah. And the crazy thing is one of the most inconsequential things in the game are gems, right? So right. like you socket things in, you get, you know, these slight boosts and it was just like, why are you picking these up? They're killing inventory space. They're not doing anything for you. And then the whole point of the season is those you don't use gems anymore. And now you're just using these like corrupted hearts to give you like wild buffs. That's good. And like some people are like, some of these are really powerful and that's really cool. And they added new unique items and all this stuff. All really cool. But now you made the gems even less important. And, and like it's like none <laughs> they of that matters. So you still have the gems. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that people relied on for defense and armor and things like that, a lot of that got nerfed. Um, like I said, for me specifically, what they did with a barbarian, and I don't want to get like in too much in the weeds, my whole build was I spin around and I slow everyone and I bleed everyone. And I just, I wear them down and I kill them all, right? That's getting in the weeds? <laughs> well, no, no, no I'm, I'm, I don't want to get it. So that, that's, yes, that's what it is. High level. In the weeds is I have one ability that I just slow everyone all times. Well, I changed that, that I only slow enemies that are above 80% health, which is a big difference. Yeah. So now all the enemies are a lot faster. I'm a lot squishier because my armor isn't as good. Like, yeah. It's like they completely changed it, and my sh I rely heavily on my shouts to buff my damage. But now all the shouts have a like longer cooldown. It's just like ruined the flow of it. Um, killed the experience and everything. So they, they did all this. They heard the community outcry. They're like, hey, we're, we're, we're doing a fireside chat. And that was Friday. Okay. Uh, so they were, gotcha. were doing it. Did you want to talk about anything? I can no. give you a Tell quick. me about the fireside. Because I thought the fireside was the patch. So I appreciate the clarification. No, so, so the fireside is them saying, we fucked up. We hear you. This is what we're going to do. Uh, so let me... So someone on Reddit luckily did this and Kyle sent this over. So this is all super nice. But they, th this is kind of high level. Kay. Sorcerer and Barbarian will be buffed in the next few weeks. So think about that for a second. Each of these seasons are a quarter. So you get four seasons a year, a few months. Now it says in the next few weeks. Kind of open-ended. We don't know what that means. They're going to get buffed. Cool. <laughs> uh so there's that. There will be, quote-unquote, substantial increases to mob densities and hell tides and nightmare dungeons. So more guys should give you more XP, but you nerf the XP. So why wouldn't you just bring the XP back on what you already had? So there's that. Uh, in the next patch, there will be an addition uh, stash tab. So they're just giving you an extra stash. Uh, and elixirs, which I don't think you got to, uh, are going to be increased to 99. That's good, because elixirs... I think they, you could only hold like 10 of them or something, and then they just took up inventory space. So great. Um, a dedicated gems tab will come in season two. So again, we got to wait three months for gems to not take up inventory space. 
Um, skill respec costs will be reduced by 40% to encourage build switching. Cool, not a problem. Um, and then they, there will be adjustments to make leveling 50 to 100 feel less like a job. Uh, there are plans to add more variety to endgame content. So it's like these very open-ended, like, oh, no, just stick with it. We'll, we'll do this stuff. It's like, okay. Like um, It seems like the, what they've focused on is like the opposite. <laughs> yeah, well, right? the thing I don't understand is you just buffed the XP in Nightmare Dungeons. You just buffed the XP on Tree of Whispers. And then you put the season out and you like not only undo that, but then like go in the opposite direction. Yeah. So right. how can you, how can you be surprised about that? Yeah, that's really weird. Um, there will be more opportunities to obtain Uber uniques in the future. Cool. The drop rate will be made a little bit more common over time. Again, very broad, uh, build loadouts are being discussed but are not currently on the roadmap. So that means like, if you want a specific build to like, do a specific dungeon, you can save that. Worth noting, that was in Diablo 3. Uh, so you could literally have different builds for what you want to do. Um, and just quick load them? You would literally go into like, it's like an armor thing. It opens it up and you like, I want this one and yeah, you're good. Got yeah. it, okay. Um, there will be a way to find particularly unique items and or particularly, or particular legendary aspects in season two. So again, they're already they're kicking the can down the road three months. So like they hear this and they're just like, I, I guess take the loss. Season, on season one's one. doomed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, man, okay. Like, are people going to come back to season two? I mean, sure, I would, and I think part of it is like I I got my guy up to like level ninety one, so I was playing like just grinding away for a while. So am I ready to start all the way back over on something that's just harder content? with a new character, probably not. So maybe season two is when I come in, but right. in the back of my mind, it's like I paid for the Uber edition, which got me the battle pass and the 20 skips and all this other stuff. But then, so I'm like throwing money away, basically not playing season one. Yeah. Which doesn't feel great, That's you know? Rough. So that kind of sucks. That's really rough. Uh, damage reduction system. So armor and resistances will be reworked in season two. Again, season two, there will be more options to modify gear in the future. So beyond season two, uh, legendary drop chance will be buffed for loot goblins. Um, there may be different loot goblin types in the future, which they had in Diablo three. Uh, and then there's a hot fix that will be rolling out this afternoon. It includes changes to NMDs. What is MMD? Night Nightmare Dungeons. Night Nightmare Dungeons. Yeah. So what does that mean? Is that mob density? Is that lowering the difficulty? We don't know. So that's what they said. Yikes. A lot of see ya, see, okay. A lot of we hear you. See ya next season. You know, this is like <clears throat> literally the day after they launched season one. Right. That's that's what they gave us. It's crazy to me that like I don't know. I maybe there's something I I don't. Well, obviously there's a lot of things I don't know, but. It seems to take them a really long time to fix things that, in my mind, should be very simple. Like they're like, okay, season two gem gem slot in your stash. Yeah, is that like not like a one day project? If that, <laughs> a couple hours and we're like I, of code. Making, I look. I don't know anything. Hard. Yeah, I don't sure. know anything. But in my tiny brain. I could only I, imagine that that can't be a huge task. My whole thing is I don't understand why you kill the XP. Like, why if, if you don't play, right? Like, you haven't played since we got you through the campaign, right? And then you went on vacation. So if No, I, I, played, I played after that because I got up to 50. Okay, I mean, sure, fine. You got to, like, you got to 50. We did some stuff. I thought it was, we got you there before you went away to Portugal. No, remember we were having tr trouble... Because I was like under leveled. Oh, time. okay. Sure. I mean, sure. But like, what I'm saying is, now you would come into my level 91 guy. Oh you yeah. Sit I'm at, fucked, you yeah. sit at the start of the dungeon. Yeah. I should be getting you like a hundred times XP, just blowing you through to get to where I was, so we could play together. Yep. All that's just gone. Now enjoy your 1.5 XP boost. Or no, whatever. that's and that's it's just horrific. Like, like, what what is the, like? You sit down at Blizzard discussing. 
Like, yeah. What is the purpose of that? What are we trying to accomplish? You just raised it. And when I say just, I'm talking like within two weeks prior yeah. to this, maybe three, you just increased the XP for everything because it was too much of a chore to do Nightmare Dungeons. And then this one, you make it more of a chore and then say, oh, we're going to make it less of a chore. Like, what? That's insane. It's an eight. It's an 80. It's an eight out of 10. I still think it's a, what did I give it? 84? Sure. I had fun with it, man. I think the campaign was good. And so like, you got to think about it from, like, this is what I said last time. Casual perspective. Came in, played the campaign, you know, leveled up afterwards, saw what the loop is. Yeah. I was like, all right, I get this. Get why people do this. That's cool. I'll see you in season one. And now the plane's crashed. <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> I'm probably not going to play season one. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, can I drop my score now? I guess, since it's a constantly up- evolving game. Season one, there's no set items, which I lost the cheeseburger on. I thought they were going to come out with set armors and stuff like that. None of that. There's no pets still, which is crazy to me. I, I think, really, it's they just... Season two is probably going to be the the first make like, a break. Yeah, yeah. I, it, and look, it's like I think Civ's a good description of like a similar place because mm-hmm. I know you were complaining a lot about like Diablo three had this like they should have at least started here. Here's the baseline, right? Which I totally get that argument, but at the same time, I think when you're developing a new game like that, there's a lot of different considerations to make. Sure. Where I just don't think. In games like that, you're going to be able to have all of those quality of life things that the previous title had over the X amount of years that they had to update constantly. I just don't understand the whole point of having this open world map that's this persistent map that you open up, you paint it, and it's like, okay, here's everything. (laughs) Yep. I don't understand having that, but then funneling you into this, all you're going to do are just dungeons. That's right. it. That's the only thing you're going to do because nothing else matters. Just do your dungeons. And it's like, if you're going to do that anyway, that's the same thing as Rifts from Diablo 3, which is fine. Make it r- random. But make it random and just give us one town that has everything within like two feet. Why do I have to like run across an entire town just to get to my stash Immer- and then run all the way back to Immersion. the... Immersion. <sighs> sure. But like, I don't MMO. know. Yeah, well, that yeah, exactly. It's just like for for. It's like they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. They're like, "Oh, it's this open world. It's very immersive. You want to spend time here, blah blah blah." And it's like, no, you just added a patch where you're just teleporting from dungeon to dungeon to dungeon. Which, thank goodness, they did. But like, you're spending zero time in that world yeah. once you get to your level to yeah. start grinding. Like pick, zero pick time. A lane. Pick Maybe a lane. you'll go into the hell tide. Maybe. Yeah, and even then, I don't think it's worth it. Now that they made that harder and more random and everything, like it's just okay. I think you make some fair points. I don't know. I am very eager to see how Blizzard's going to dig themselves out of this. Let me one. put it this way: Last night, I I turned it on, made a necromancer. <clears throat> I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this necromancer because I looked up the rank list and necromancers. Like <laughs> it's literally like the first five or six are just necro, necro, necro. It's like okay, so that's the class to play. That's the class. Funnily enough, that's probably the next one they're going to nerf. But that's the class. Um, I got to maybe level six. Maybe. May, uh, maybe ten. But then I was like, I could, I could be fishing right now. Oh. Like I could be, and I literally shut that thing off. Yeah. Jumped on Dave the Diver. Dave the fucking Diver. I never looked back. I love it. Dave the Diver's yeah. eating Blizzard's lunch. Dave the Diver is more fun than Diablo right now. Is it more fun than Final Fantasy? For me right now, yeah. <laughs> wow. Of course. But, yeah. Doesn't give you a headache. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a lot. That was intense. Yeah. I think you make good points. We'll see what Blizzard does. Blizzard might be like the worst company ever, according to Metacritic. <laughs> ah, well, yeah. They're, Dude, they're not 3.2. Anything. I mean, come on. It's not a 3.2. No, it's not. That's insane. Yeah. People are giving it zeros. Like, all right, let's. Yeah, I just hate review review bombs. I don't. That's why I don't like the. I guess it's like a forum protest, but yeah. I don't know. That's why you don't like user scores. That's fair. Yeah, because we're emotional. We're an emotional we're lot. We're very volatile. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think that's all we wanted to cover, right? Yeah, that was a lot. It's a lot. It was a good, hefty amount. A lot of games. We'll we'll see what happens next week. Either we're going to be beating ourselves with Street Fighter or shooting ourselves with Remnant. 
So violent. Yeah. It's the culture. It's video games. Or you can play Dave the Diver. I might just play. I just might become just flip. Dave I'll, the I'll Diver. I'll do Final Fantasy. You do Dave the one Diver. One trick. Yeah. And you'll never see me again. Dude, we can compare our fish lists, our, our, our cards. That's awesome. Got to gotta catch them all, I think. I, I don't think that's the thing. It's like got to fish them all or something. They do something. Like got to reel them all in or something. I don't know. I hope he's a little more clever than that. Yeah. It's, um, it's not. But it's funny. <laughs> it's good. Like they... Michael, so you know Michael Bay? Yeah. Like the, so there's a guy in here, because you get like VIP people that like want a very specific dish. You have to go out and like find the fish for and stuff. Sure. There's Michael Bang, who's an action <laughs> film director. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, what kind yeah. of fish is he like? Uh, I don't know. He She's is. Probably like, likes the shark. Yeah. It's like some. Sh- it's like a, I have to get like three different kinds. Like that's an asshole. Rice. Yeah. That's, uh, that sounds totally right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Cool. Well, that's all we got for today. If you made it this far, we appreciate it. I've decided I'm not going to assign Tyler anything. You thought I'd forget. Fair enough. Didn't forget. All right. Could have fucked you there. Yeah. That would have been twice. 20 minutes an episode, 24 episodes. That would have been a little chunk. Chunk. That, that would have been a chunky right. monkey. Well, next week. I'm going to think about it. Um, right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, our stuff's located couchcompany.games. Check us out there, all the links. And we will see you same time, same place next week. Thanks for joining us on the couch. Peace. <laughs>